in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed Adonai, Adonai, ancient king of Israel, Adonai, Adonai, there is no king just like you. said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John also taught his disciples. One of his disciples said, Lord, teach us to pray. We want to explore the power that is in prayer. Teach us to pray. Father, we pray like the disciples prayed, teach us to pray. We know there is power in prayer, but I pray that you help us understand the ordinances and the patterns of the ministry of effectual prayer. The prayer that works, the prayer that produces. May we, O oh God, by this series, be a people who can command power in the place of prayer. 
Tonight, O oh God, I pray that the grace be supplied in the name of Jesus Christ. Please be seated if you can. Let's be very sensitive. Teach us to pray part two. Is anyone under the anointing close to you, whether inside, outside, just guide them so that I believe tonight that God is going to be depositing that grace for effectual prayer. The, the prayer ministry of many believers is full of activities, religion and emotion, but with very little power. So God wants to grant us grace to be able to be men and women who can pray effectually. Are we together? Psalm 65 verse 2, O thou that hearest prayer, it says, to thee shall all flesh come. So there is a God that can answer prayer. Idols cannot answer prayer. The Bible records that when the angel of death struck the nation, please let's settle down. When the angel of death struck the firstborn sons in Egypt, that Ramesses carried his son and dropped that son to an idol and began to call upon that idol. And he learned once again that idols are only the works of the hands of men. But the Bible says, O thou that hearest prayer, whoever can hear is alive. And whoever can hear can also answer. Hallelujah. Please make sure you get last week's teaching. We may not have the time to go into it again. But just maybe one or two things to just tie it up. I started last week by challenging us that the Bible calls believers many things. The Bible calls us joint heirs. The Bible calls us light. The Bible calls us salt. It's important that the believer not only know who he, uh, who he is in Christ, but the, the various names that represent your dimensions. The Bible calls us ambassadors. In Revelation chapter 5 and verse 10, the Bible calls us kings and priests. That means there is the priestly ministry of the believer. Are we together? It is not a ministry to men of God. It is not a ministry to serious Christians. It is a ministry to everyone who has come under the Lordship of the Christ. And that the major assignment of the priestly ministry is offering that incense. The incense of prayer. The prayer ministry of the saints is the priestly ministry of the saints. Any believer that does not pray is neglecting his or her priestly ministry. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 21 and verse 13 that his house would be called a house of prayer. So not only are believers people of prayer, even the house of God is mandated to be called the house of prayer. We took our time to explain last week why believers should pray. I think that's where we stopped. Um, please listen again and again for the various reasons why the Bible mandates that believers pray. Hallelujah. Part two here, we'll just go straight to Matthew chapter six. Please turn with me. We're studying scripture now. Matthew chapter six. If you do not love the word of God, your spiritual life is under attack. I repeat, if you do not love the word of God, your spiritual life is under attack. Praise the Lord. A car that hits fuel will not move. Is that correct? Yes. Fish that hits water will die. The Bible says man shall not live. So this is not just the issue of prosperity or success. This is about living. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds. So if that word that proceeds from the mouth of God, captured in scripture, um, does not attract your spirit, is a sign that you are dying. Praise the Lord. Matthew chapter 6, this is the teaching ministry of Jesus. And let me say it again, that one of the major ways that Jesus built the disciples was through the ministry 
of the teaching of the word and he set for us a template that means believers are built primarily by the teaching of the word are we together not just to preach understand the difference between preaching and teaching preaching means to declare to bring you into an awareness of a reality to teach means to explain to show you the operation the dynamics of that spiritual reality so i can tell you in god's economy there is favor that's preaching when i now open it and begin to show you if i say in the economy of god there is salvation that's preaching but now when i begin to teach you i show you the methodologies and then i show you how to activate it believers are primarily built please listen carefully believers are not just built by reading please listen believers are not just built by praying believers are built when the word of god that contains many things the promises of god the ways of god the systems the modus operandi of god is taught accurately listening to it and understanding it will now supply the grace to walk in the truths therein are we together the protocol for really receiving the power of god is that you must get the light that necessitates that power the power of god comes in your life to defend and to validate never forget this the purpose of the power of god in your life um, is to defend defend something you believe and then to validate it in your life and in the life of others that means if there is no light there is no need for the power of god to come in defense every time jesus made a statement the power of god was released to back that statement and to validate that what he said was true so to just begin to randomly search for power without a passion for knowing the ways of god is what will delve people into witchcraft are we together will delve people into all kinds of error remember that the first thing they did was that the wine was first water before it became wine are we together it was first water in the jar then from water it started changing to wine if your own starts wine directly it's not god that is doing that miracle if it's that miracle it will start from the word of god that water then it will now be turned to wine praise the lord so believers must be taught the teaching ministry you see it is because of this that theologically speaking there is still argument in the body of christ whether the fivefold ministry should be called fivefold or fourfold because the teaching ministry um it is true that that there is the office of a teacher as it were but then teaching is not so much an office it is the authorized methodology for communicating spiritual truth so it doesn't matter whether you are operating in the apostolic in the prophetic pastoral evangelistic in any case you will need the teaching ministry are we together yes when there are no teaching priests that congregation and that territory is already in trouble a teaching priest not just a praying priest a teaching priest praise God so Matthew chapter 6 Jesus is teaching now and we began to explore some things last week remember we spoke about um, certain foundational mindsets that we must have when approaching the prayer ministry number one he dealt with the issue of hypocrisy verse 5 number two he also spoke about the issue of entering into your closet I took our time to explain that and then he said to not use vain repetition i explained that very thoroughly um we're going to go to the prayer proper now and then to explore it praise the lord are we still together right so um the prayer starts from verse 9 matthew chapter 6 please from verse 9 look up jesus is about to teach now on prayer and he said after this manner now notice that jesus never said by this recitation the idea was not the recitation the idea was not the chanting the idea was that i am putting for you 
a system, a manner, an approach. Are we together? That when you want to approach, remember what necessitated this lecture was their lack of results. It was very clear that their prayer was not producing results. It was not prayerlessness. It was lack of effectual prayer that necessitated this lecture. The disciples were already praying. This is not about lack of prayer. This is about prayer that produces results. They were already praying. And they noticed that Jesus prayed in a certain way and got results. And every time they prayed, they didn't have results. And they said, look, let's stop shadow boxing. Teach us to pray, even as John taught his disciples. So effectual prayer must be taught. You don't just pray. You are taught how to pray. Are we together? We'll run it down and then I will take it one by one. Verse 9. Let's read together. One to read. After this manner, therefore, pray ye. Uh -huh. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. 12. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. 13. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Jesus is teaching now. So let's look at what Jesus was saying. After this manner. That means use this approach, not use these words, use this approach. Are we together? So Jesus is telling us that something about this prayer construction, please go back to verse 9, holds the key to getting results in prayer. Are you ready? Number one, our Father. He says when you begin to pray, pray in this manner, our Father father everybody say our father jesus is teaching here that the kind of prayer that produces results must first start with an understanding of who you are praying to are we together now the word father is the word abba a double b a it means source it means sustainer it means preserver he is not saying call on God. He is saying have a revelation of the fatherhood of God as you approach prayer. There are certain informations about fatherhood that will sponsor your faith and your confidence while praying. Are we together? Jesus said a number of things about fathers. Number one, Romans chapter 8 and verse 15. The Bible tells us that as believers we have been given the right and the access to cry abba father media please walk with me romans 8 15 for ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear notice now notice that the moment you are introducing fatherhood two spirits must exist one bondage two fear so that when you approach the prayer ministry that produces result if it is the fatherhood of god then it cannot coexist with fear and a sense of bondage are you following me now he says that he has given us the spirit of adoption and by that spirit we cry abba father matthew chapter 7 and verse 11 i want us to hurry up matthew 7 and verse 11 matthew not amos matthew 7 and verse 11 now look at this jesus is teaching here now and he said if you being evil that means enshrined in your nature is evil you are evil but that even in your evil you know how to give good gifts is that true yes terrorists have wives true or false terrorists have children true or false many of them are very responsible fathers is that true jezebel was a very wicked woman but was an outstanding wife the king never complained about Jezebel. She comes and she sees her husband having a, a poor countenance. Because of that, she takes the initiative to punish Elijah for making her husband's mood change. Now, that's a very good wife. Forget that she's a witch. I'm not talking about her ministry in terms of the demonic operation. I mean her family. Are we together? So, I'm just trying to... 
buttress on this the bible says men are evil but that even in our evil the moment our fatherhood is invoked there is a sense of compassion and that we can still leave provision to be good not to everybody to our children so if you being evil know how to give good gifts everybody say give good gifts not gifts good gifts that means you have to select no this is not profitable for my child this is not profitable for my child this is profitable good gift means there is a process of carefully selecting it meaning you can trust anything that comes from that father because it was selected it was not randomly picked if you know how to give good gifts to your children then how much more will your heavenly father give good things shout good things that means that Jesus came to correct a perception about the father because until then they did not believe they believed that both good and bad and everything came from the father they credited it the prophets of old although they were used by God they really did not know God I hope you know that so they credited all kinds of things and Jesus came as the image of the invisible God to correct our perception about God and he's saying that God in his character gives good things to them that ask him that means when i ask god for something what do i expect good things notice the bible never says that he just gives you your desire alone he gives you good things that means you must travel to his realm to interpret good from his standpoint i need to correct this up front because the idea what may be good for you may not be God's idea of good. The same way a child will come and slap his father and say, give me the car key. That is the child's interpretation of good things. But the father knows that giving that child that key will end that child's life. So it is part of his fatherhood to deny that child and give him something else. Prayer that works now. Are we together? Abba Father that when you come to God number one you must come to God understanding that he is the source of all things don't come to God as an option <clears throat> the moment you approach God as an option you are not approaching Abba Father it's a mindset it's not just to say our father in terms of the linguistic pronunciation that come with this mindset that the man you are approaching is not somebody who was employed by another person to hear you he is the owner that means whatever god cannot give me no man can give me that is a revelation that should drive me in prayer lord i come to you and i'm asking you for this if god says no and anybody tells you yes that person is going to kill you because the owner you come to my kitchen and you see yam plantain and you say give me i say no and you ask my security man and the security man says yes are you wise to believe that that man will come to my kitchen and it is my house i employed him he's now taking my place illegally that's a thief and a robber they are the ones who enter through the window you see that when you approach god approach him as touching his goodness when you approach god approach him as touching his fatherhood understand that his heart of compassion is ever before you that will take away the sense of bondage and the sense of fear many believers continue to approach god in fear continue to approach god with a sense of bondage and sometimes we men of god in a bid to help people to be serious with god we think that the only way to make people serious with god is to threaten them and to reveal god as an angry god who can strike you the moment he's angry it is true that these dimensions are in god but he has chosen that the dimension that you should approach in prayer is his fatherhood our father we cry, Abba Father, hallowed be your name, hallowed be your name, hallowed be your name. We cry, Abba Father, we cry, Abba Father, hallowed be your name, hallowed.
Now I have seen, I've watched a number of children approach their fathers. And it's amazing that every father is also something else. I hope you know. The father is also a manager. He's a CEO. He's a doctor. But when the child comes, while we are queuing to see the doctor, the child is coming to see his father. So if you tell the father, the child to join a queue, he says, no, I join the queue if I want to see a doctor. But now I'm coming to see my father and he can just run and come and embrace the father. Watch this. Watch this. You can't run and embrace the man like that because he's not your father. You see that? He is the one who will give you injection and prescribe a drug. But the child is coming to his father. Now watch this. It doesn't matter whether he steps on the father's toes. Remember, the father has an eternal commitment towards the child. That does not mean the child will be lawless. But there is a consolation that at his worst, he's still loved by his father. It's a revelation. Listen, believers, let me teach you this. This is the balanced perspective of both grace, revelation, and all of that. There are people who can never approach God properly. Do you know why? Because we have been given a mindset that all God is, is a warrior. Did the Bible not say there is a time for peace? And there is a time, once it is under the earth, God is not always fighting. He fights. Don't make that mistake. He's on a, he's a rider on a white horse, but he's not always on a horse. He can sit on the throne. Jesus was demonstrating the fatherhood of God when, remember these busy protocol guys who wanted to drive the people from seeing him and said, don't interrupt Jesus. He's preparing for a meeting. And Jesus said, no, no, I'm not only a savior. I'm a father. I remember I'm revealing the fatherhood of God. Let the little children, not let strangers, mm -mm, let their children, they are entitled to my attention. Let the little children come to me. He didn't say, let the little children prepare and come to me. He said, let them come to me. He said, do not forbid them. The children are acting out something about the father and his children. Rather than driving them, learn. Learn. For, for such is the kingdom of heaven. That means you must approach me this way. When we pray, pray in this manner. I am coming to my father. It doesn't matter what dream you said you saw and what God told you about me. It's all right, I've had you. My father. Abba, father. It doesn't matter what you said God revealed to you will happen to me tomorrow because of whatever you think. Thank God for your wonderful vision. But I have, I know a way of sorting myself. He's Abba, my source, my sustainer, my preserver, my defender. Listen, in this ministry, come. If I see this gentleman outside, even if I'm passing and he calls me and says I'm a member of this ministry, he has called on my fatherhood. If I see that he cannot pay his bike, even if he was wrong, I will not draw his ears outside. It will be stupid of a father. This is a, this is a home affair. So I will fake correct that thing for my namesake, lest it be told that I mentored him wrongly. It has nothing to do with whether I love him or not. My reputation is at stake. So I will correct it first and say, meet me at home. When he comes home, I'll say, next time, get your bike money before you go. So the awareness that I will correct him, but the awareness that my love overrides everything, gives him confidence that even when he's wrong, he does not run away, he runs towards. Please understand this. Listen, I don't know where we got this Jonah type revelation that every time we feel unworthy we run away then when we think we are okay we run towards that's a devilish theology Abba Father my life changed when the understanding of God as my father hmm. He's not only the king of glory. He's not only the maker of the heavens and the earth. You see that? I can call him different things and they are wonderful dimensions. But he says for effective prayer, know this. He is the final bus stop for judgment. The final bus stop for mercy. The final bus stop for everything. Abba, Father. When you pray, say our Father. 
he's not your father alone our not your father alone he's the father of all believers too that means you don't act as if God yes God has personal covenants with people but sometimes you know especially we men of God we can make it look as if I have a business with God that I can manipulate God into frustrating you Abba, God is father Fa our father not my father I go to my God and your God my father and your father he was first the only begotten son but when he resurrected he became the first begotten he had now brought us many sons into glory listen this is very powerful because our approach many times in prayer we don't know oh God um, well if you don't hear me you can go through Joshua Selman yes there are dimensions where you can tap into a man's covenant we've taught that but the idea is not to reduce you to feel less he is our father you see my precious children here after koinonia I am their father so there's none of their business what you think about them sometimes they may not dress well sometimes they may not look well once I am happy honestly what you think makes no there's is none of their business when you pray pray in this manner it didn't say just say our father you can say our father not have the mindset it's not an enchantment it's a revelation the person I am approaching is Abba he is the source of all things I don't approach God like an option you see why many believers don't don't they have a stone at the back of their house that stone was anointed and given to them by some kind of devilish covenant are we together they have another idol I know that most if you don't have it just keep quiet it doesn't mean other people don't have it it's amazing what Africans bring together they put that stone they put all of those things then they add God to it and pray to everything and wait for whichever answers them and God says no you don't get that about me our father I was not molded they didn't breathe into me no you carry cement that was made by Dangote and make an idol and make it strong using cement and pray to it you see how stupid we are and yet God says no when you come to me approach me in this way my father look at Jesus Jesus is standing by the grave of Lazarus and for a few seconds he forgets about the issue of death and resurrection I thank thee my father because you always hear me he said I'm even embarrassed to look like I'm trying to push you I'm only doing it so that they will understand what is going on the love of God is a revelation that the saints must carry the love and the fatherhood of God listen to me God is not listen I will say it again there are many ways to know God and one of it is through Jesus Jesus manifested as the image of the invisible God his primary ministry before his death and resurrection was to correct our perspective about God that means whatever we thought God was we look at Jesus for verification and we never see one person destroyed in the ministry of Jesus it was only the religious people that suffered he only whipped them once and he whipped them out of compassion the Bible said the zeal of the Lord consumed him not wickedness the zeal of the house of God he said you are turning my house to a den of robbers and it has necessitated this kind of action Abba father he comes to the woman by the well and he starts a conversation with her he looks at Zacchaeus look at the love of God Zacchaeus is climbing a tree as a tax collector do you know the kind of humility that is and he says Zacchaeus I've changed the crusade you are worth my going to your house only you come down if you were in Jesus's ministry you will hate him because how can you cancel a crusade just to go and see a tax collector one man you are on your way going somewhere and a man climbs up and you see his compassion and you say I cancel my program to attend to only you oh Jesus you are showing favoritism he said no I'm honoring someone here who thinks he's far from me I want to bring him near Jesus 
every time they called upon the fatherhood of God, look at the compassion. Look at the way he approached them. Take away fear when you approach God. Listen, let me tell you this. He is the one who can forgive you. Running away is still in trouble. And if you are right, he's the one who can bless you. You see that? Everybody say, our father. Sit down, please. Let's continue. We have to rush. So the revelation of God as father is very powerful. The source of all things. The sustainer. And the Bible says, the major characteristics of fathers is that they are givers. It's in the Bible. That means if you are not a giver, you are not a father. Even if you have children. He never said, if you who can give birth. <clears throat> God's idea of fatherhood is not procreation. God's idea of fatherhood is the ability to select and ensure that there is an advantage to the one you are given to. He measures fatherhood first, not by the power and the ability to procreate. That means based on God's idea, there are many men that have children but are not fathers. They do not give a good destiny. They do not give a good life. A true father is a giver. Powerful. Every time I approach him, whether I ask him for something or not. Did you know, let me tell you this. Ministry has taught me a lot of fatherhood. Every time I see my people sincerely, whether our children here or the workers here in the ministry, the moment I see them, I'm, I'm not even as concerned whether they are crying or they are laughing, whether they've sinned against me or done something wrong. In all honesty, my primary concern when I see them, I want to know they are doing well. By the time I can look at your face and know you have not eaten. I suspend whatever discussion we're having. Have you eaten? Of course, you may not have the courage to say no. And I should have the fatherhood enough to insist. You will not just say, well, eh, I'm not sure. And then say, okay, no problem. It's all right. It looks like you've eaten. You are not a father. You are like a father. You are a hypocrite. You are like a roaring lion. How Satan goes around. But he's not a lion. True fathers are givers. Gentlemen, this is a message for you already. We are doing prayer. So check your fatherhood. It's not by biological maturity. It is by the aptness, the ease to release, the ease to give, the ease to give. You watch children crying in front of bones. You don't even have the fatherhood to say, let me just drop 100 naira. You just laugh and say, yeah, boy, you like it? Boy says, yes, sir. And, and it will be like a joke till you leave that child and go, you are not Abba. No, you are not a father. You are a grown-up adult, but you are not a father. Is God helping us? So he's saying even evil fathers are givers. So whether you are a good father or you are an evil father, at least be a giver. Powerful. You know I have met God by something that is in my hand while I leave him. Whether I go there to intercede whether I go there to make requests, the fatherhood of God will not allow me to go out of his presence empty-handed. Nobody comes to my house and leaves empty-handed. It's true. Why will somebody come to my house and leave empty-handed? No. I will insist there must be a signature that is my house you came to. My house is not a graveyard. You come to my house, you should leave with something. You claim to have been meeting God but you are living with your hands empty. Abba, the giver. Abba, the giver of good things. Good things. I approached God and I said, Lord, this is my year of extraordinary fruitfulness. And I approach him with the understanding that if God, the Father, gave freely his son, Jesus, what else will he not give me? Are we together number two thank you so he says our father number two who art in heaven <laughs> matthew chapter 6 open our eyes oh god see i truly pray for you from the depth of my heart that the spirit of revelation in a mighty way will come upon your life you see let me tell you how to know the spirit of revelation is upon you it is not in the scarceness of the information you are producing 
but the ability to draw the mysteries of the kingdom out of stories the ability to draw the methodologies of God out of anything you know the spirit of revelation is upon you when the ways of God can come out of any scripture not just the ones you know any scripture he shows you his ways he shows you Christ revealed through any scripture who art in heaven let's discuss now look up please it's a very powerful prayer he's saying when you approach God number one approach him based on his fatherhood have we gotten that then number two he says who art in heaven that means that who is in a realm that is not here listen carefully he is here by his spirit but bodily speaking if I use that word he is domiciled in a realm that is not earth that immediately means approach God through faith your faith will have to come alive because he's not seen in this realm. Are we together? And that anything you cannot see, you do not need faith for again. Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 6. Our Father who art in heaven, who art in a realm that is not earthly, who art in a dimension that may not be easily seen with my optical eyes, but you are real. I must approach you with that understanding. Hebrews chapter 6, please, and verse 6. He says... Where's that? 11, sorry. Hebrews 11 verse 6. I meant to say, sorry. 11 and verse 6. Watch this. It says, But without faith, it is impossible to please him, God. For he that cometh to God, so he's still talking about prayer, must believe that he is, meaning he exists. I cannot see him, but I know he is real. And then his father because he also gives and he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. My father who art in heaven, I believe you although I cannot see you so that I don't feel stupid for praying. You are standing alone and you believe you are not alone. You need faith to believe that. You are writing your prayer request and coming and throwing it before an altar from a sociology standpoint he knows you are not fine while you are writing oh god be watching i'm writing i drop it before you and you are happy he's seen it doesn't make sense until you engage through faith what is faith conviction about the reality of god and the integrity of his person and the action that you take based on that conviction it's called faith are we together that the foundation of true faith is your conviction the bible says you must believe he is not everybody i believe will have the privilege and the opportunity to have visionary experiences to see god glorified are we together you do not need to see god either in the spirit or in a vision to believe him no he made faith available hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 now faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen. He said, for by it, that faith is a connector. So I know. If I tell you, come my dear, if I tell you, I want to give you 1,000 naira. If you say, where is it? You are not operating by faith. You cannot see the money, but you have to trust that I'm not lying to you. Are we together? And the Bible says this scripture was inspired by the Holy Ghost. The one who searches the mind of the Father to ensure that everything revealed is truth. So when God says he's going to lift you, you don't say, where is it? Where is the house? Show me, oh God, and I will believe. You have become like Thomas. He said, until I put my hand there. He said, Thomas, you have robbed yourself of the excellency of faith. Now, since this is what you want, go. he said, blessed is he. There is a level of empowerment that come when you have not seen and yet believe. Believers are people who must learn to trust God even when they don't see him. I have a thousand naira to give you. Well, um, I, don't, I don't know if there is that money, but I believe you. The first question is you have to look at me to find out whether I can afford a thousand naira. You see that? And then number two, if I can afford a thousand naira, whether or not I am a giver enough to give you. 
if you believe me and I lie to you, then it means I don't have integrity. But at least you did the believing. Listen, if you do not believe God, how are you going to pray for the sick? You're going to stand before someone on a wheelchair and he tells you there are angels there that there's a bam in Gilead. No hospital gave you that bam. You will stand in front of everybody and say, Sam, you are going to stand up from this wheelchair because God said so. You don't have to hear a voice like prophecy says, tell him to stand up. No. The most powerful state of the believer is when you act without seeing, without hearing, but believing. Not just when you are seeing, not just when you are hearing. The man who has seen, if, I, if God opens my eyes and I'm seeing an angel now, with respect to that sight, I'm not standing by faith again. I'm seeing, it's there, I know. My conviction is tied to God, but strengthened by the presence of that angel. But I do not see, but I believe that the word of God says, are we together? That there are angels. Please listen. And so with that one now, as I minister to this person, this is faith. I can now tell Sam, stand up from that wheelchair. Now, I'm telling him to stand up. Remember that there is nothing physical. Everything there is physical. But the Bible is saying that all that we see is not all that there is. That there is a lot happening in the realm of the spirit. And he says that the person who is doing it is not in this realm. He has operations happening in this realm. But heaven is his throne and the earth is his footstool. So you have to believe. Many believers are scientific. Let me tell you this. If you cannot believe God for things unseen, you will never go far in life. There is no guarantee anywhere. Apostle, now that I came to Zaria, I thought God said I should come to Zaria. Even if you don't hear any voice, if you are convicted by the truth of scripture, that that location is a place that lifts you, you will stay here, God will back you and you will honor you. It's not about dreams and visions. It's about faith on the integrity of God's word. Visions and prophecies are inferior to the truth of scripture. Who art in heaven? Who art not in this realm? When you pray to me, I'm not in heaven. Of course, I'm in heaven seated with Christ, but I mean bodily speaking, I am here. So you can meet me. If I'm stretching my hand, you are seeing it so you can collect. But where you cannot see and yet you still stretch your hand. Lord, I know you are a giver. So I stretch my hands in advance. Faith. And the angels are watching. This is, listen, this is what surprises the angels because the angels don't walk by faith. Are you seeing that? So when they see believers in the earth who do not have the advantage of those openings and yet they trust God. Imagine how the angels felt when these guys entered the fire. They said, you believe God that far? Fire is about to roast you. And he said, no, I know whom I have believed. Listen, our faithless generation is why God cannot use mighty people. Someone wants to start a ministry and is waiting for an uncle who will vow to be the sponsor. Um, I, will, I will give you, I will give you two million to wax your album. In the economy of God, you will die and not move forward. There are times you have to stand. The signs don't go before, they follow. You believe first. That's why the Bible says when Jesus comes to the earth, we live find faith faith what in heaven the fact that he's in heaven does not mean he's dead so when you approach him not only is he a giver he resides in a realm that is not optical he resides in a realm that cannot be felt easily with your sensory perceptions that means he's giving you an added information because the devil is the master of the sense realm so when you begin to pray, he said, are you feeling like God is moving? He said, I'm feeling dry. God never told you to believe he's answering prayer because you are feeling anything. Uh -uh. This is the confidence that we have. This is scripture I'm teaching you. All these feelings have destroyed people. You may be at your most powerful state in the spirit, but because you didn't feel anything, you just say, I don't feel like praying for the sick. If, if that thing comes, I have a way of feeling. You walk that way, the devil will destroy you. 
the day there is nothing on you, you will feel as if you're on top of the world till your results show nothing is on you. Be careful with feelings. Feelings have destroyed people's lives. The word of God must become your new eyes, your new sensory perceptions. How do I know God is going to lift me? I had a dream yesterday. No, sir. No, sir. My confidence is in the word. All other experiences only support. They are not the basis. Why do I think I'll excel in ministry? People have been telling me here and there I'm very good. You will fail so woefully. Your basis of confidence in this kingdom is the word of God. Anything that is not founded on the integrity of scripture, you are already at a risk. It will not look like it until life destroys you. There are many people moving around their destiny with all kinds of dreams and visions. Dreams and visions are wonderful, but no vision and no dream sustains the power to bring itself to life. He upholds all things by the word of his power. I'm teaching you sound, effective prayer strategies. Not this shadow boxing believers continue to do. That's why there's no result. Our God will touch people here and it's like superstition. And you are waiting. God will move. The power of God will move now. And all those stupid things that believers do. No, God is not an idiot. He has taught us a good way of manifesting so that people will know we are birthing the reality of God. God is not a magician. We believe in oil. Nothing wrong with it. We believe in wafers and wine. Are we together? Because these are physical things we see. We believe in water. We believe in handkerchief. Those things are only extensions. It is faith in the Son of God. This simple thing, who art in heaven, is why many ministers cannot rise. That's why they harass people. Oh, Sam, you're a millionaire. Can you wait behind in my office? Pastor Femi, Kenny, promise you are all millionaires. Wait, uh, can God use you? Is that what he told you? Is that what he told you? Did he tell you those are your financiers? Hey boy, you see, apostle, the, the, the way ministry, wisdom is profitable. No, 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 no. That's fear. Who art in heaven? So as I approach God, you may see me moving around alone and praying outside. Make no mistakes, I'm not alone. I may be moving around. Now, there's a mistake that many people make. They say, why are you moving around and shouting? God is an intelligent God. Sit down, see if you are talking to him. No, 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 no. Just moving around and praying and shouting does not mean God is not hearing you. Usually those things are licensed for laziness. When people find out that they do not have the grace and the energy, they look for intelligent ways to justify their cold and lukewarm prayer life. At about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, not a quiet voice. Eloi, Eloi, Lamak Sabachthani. Jesus praying to his father with a loud voice. So he, he was not disbelieving his father. He was praying. When you pray loud, it's not unbelief. Jesus himself prayed with a loud voice. It's not every time he went to the grave and said, Father, thank you because you hear me. Uh -uh. There were times that he prayed, even the, his tears were like drops of blood. Yet he was praying to the father. Is God helping us? Who art in heaven? Please sit down. Let's hurry up. We must have part three for this series because part three I will teach you now the dynamics. These ones we are just observing the rules of engagement so that you don't just carelessly approach prayer and say, God, why are you not answering me? You see the way we pray, believers, many believers pray and their prayers are full of wise sayings. They just say all kinds of things. Many of those things believers say are not scriptural. Teach us to pray. Number three, hallowed be thy name. What does it mean to hallow his name? The word hallow there talks of reverence. The word hallow there talks of honor. That means do not be confused. God is father. It is true. But then be careful. Boldness is not pride and dishonor. 
you must still maintain that fortitude that although he is your father, he is God. Hallowed be your name. Hallowed be your name. I honor your office. I honor your position. I do not take you for granted. It was not by my righteousness and by my qualification that I have access to you. Now that you have given me access, I will not abuse it. Hallowed be your name. First Samuel chapter 2 and verse 30. Very powerful scripture. Let's hurry up. First Samuel chapter 2 and verse 30. Wherefore the Lord God of Israel saith, I said indeed that my house and the house of thy father should walk before me forever. But now the Lord said, be it far from me. Listen, he said, for them that honor me, I will honor. And they that despise me shall be lightly esteemed. This is God speaking. So God is saying, just because I am father, there should be a place of preserving honor at the back of your mind. Boldness is not foolishness. Hear what the Bible says. And this is where many believers get it wrong. Please give us Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 16. We are studying scripture. The Bible says to come before him with boldness. Are we together? Let us therefore come boldly, not arrogantly. Boldness is not arrogance. Boldness is not pride. Boldness is not dishonor. Are we together? Yes. Boldness. I recognize, oh God, that you are my father. You have stooped so low, but I will never take you for granted. You are father, but you are God. Charismatics and Pentecostals have messed up in this area. Just because we have an understanding of the fatherhood of God, you see the way people talk to God and act and you are wondering you say you see this this variety of dishonor hallowed be your name notice that every time you would see once and again Jesus would remind them look at how Jesus hallowed the name of his father I can of myself do nothing after being so famous and doing great things no Jesus paid attention to the father he always made people know that he was under authority. He continued to project the fatherhood of God. Hallowed be your name. This is a principle that you have to learn. Because you see, let me tell you this. In a true father-son relationship, come my friend, watch this. The proof of genuine love between a father and a son is that when you see two of them, you should not know who is father and who is son. A wise son, now every once and again, has the responsibility to intentionally make men see the difference. Are you seeing that now? This is what Jesus did in his earth work. My earthly father is alive. And I love, please help that lady. Now watch this, please, look up. My earthly father is alive and honestly... It's possible they are even listening now. My earthly father has profound respect for me. Profound respect for me. My father will not pick his, call and his phone and call me until he sends a text and say, Are you free, sir? My father that gave birth to me. Now, if I'm a stupid son, one day I will look at him and say, um, this, this careless thing that these young people in our generation do, don't know the difference between father and son. Popsy, how are you? You see those, those kinds of indiscipline attitudes? No. no matter what happens, my father remains my father. I can change the future, but I cannot change history. Father. Are we together? There are times that when you see me and God, you think we drink tea together. This guy can just joke and God will honor him. Ah, this man and Holy Spirit, they are joking. Oh dear, you ask him. There are times I know the difference. My knees tell the difference. My clothes on the ground tell the difference. Yes. 
everybody who recognized the difference between God as Father and God as God, that revelation, that halo is very powerful. They commanded dimensions of his attention. Are we together? Although Jesus being God, when he got to heaven, he didn't say shift, let me sit down. He waited until he was coronated. The Lord said to my Lord, sit down. Until then he was standing. Yet co-equal. Sit down. Are we together? Yes. I remember a few years ago, one very foolish boy came around to see me and he said, Apostle, they say you are so nice, you are so humble, and he was misbehaving. I told him, I said, please walk out of my house. Humility is not stupidity. You, don't, you, are, not, you are not a wise person. Go and learn wisdom. See, no matter how free you become with God, no matter how free you become with greatness, never forget who you are talking to. Never forget who you are relating with. That's why every once and again, when men forget, God will do something that will remind them. I am God from beginning to the end. There's no place for argument. I am a God by Believers need to be told this. Listen. That's why and if he loves you, he will not descend on you. He will descend on an enemy in a way and manner that just makes you say, ah, this is the one I'm relating with. And you come back. He said, no, you are still mine. I see it happen even with me. There are times when miracle service is done, people are, or maybe people are on the queue. And the other person is hoping to jump and hug me. And the person before him, as soon as I touch that person, the person is flying up and down. You see the person just... The next person on the queue now behaves and says, good afternoon. I said, no, we were to hug now. What suddenly? Let me teach you something. Every time you humble yourself and reach out to people, discern whether they are on or changes. If it drops as they come close, stop there. Never give people access beyond their level of communicating honor. It's dangerous. They will destroy you, destroy your system, destroy everything. My children here can do things for me that many of you cannot do. They can command me to bring my ears. Bring your ears and hear. And I'll just bend quietly. And they will now say, I want puff puff or I want something. And I would have looked and said, can you imagine this? Do you know who is standing before you? While you are standing, oh God, finally I'm going to see Apostle. <laughs> Bend your ears, Apostle. Go and, I need chinching up of puff. I, I just, okay, quietly go and meet the welfare HOD to sort you out. That's Father. But I can guarantee you, as those children grow, one day, if they do something that is not nice, even if it's with two fingers, you can spank them. One, two, I'm still Father. Are we together? Notice people who don't spank children a bit when they cry. They get used to it because they know I can cry my way out. One day you tell them, mm, I'm your father, but I'm a leader. The God of heaven. Respect him. Hallow be your name. You know, when you see a man of God moving strongly under the anointing, it looks like he's commanding God. Oh, the power of God will touch this and this one is flying. The power of God will do this. I decree and declare by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And it looks like this man has pushed God from the throne. Oh God, where are you? This man is the one sitting on the throne based on everything. A wise man. While you are enjoying the wow factor. Remember you are moving. It's like you are moving at the edge of a seat. A wise person will quickly... Just say, um, ladies and gentlemen, I, let me just remind you again that there is one who is mightier than I. The moment you just balance that equation, you frustrate the devil. Ah, I was on my way hoping he would continue like that. Now he's acknowledged God. Because in all your ways, when you acknowledge him, he will direct you. That means there is always progress. Let me tell you this. Fame looks sweet. It is very, very powerful 
to let men know you are the final bus stop of everything. The God of Apostle Joshua Selman, the God of Koinonia, you enjoy it when people are sitting there and people are kneeling down. Oh, daddy, you know, those things, those things look powerful until you forget God. God does not punish you. He steps out just like your will wanted and you will see what it means to be without God. Have you seen a dog wanting to get a bone but someone is standing there? It can wait for two hours hoping that guy will move. That's how the devil is. Your immunity is not in any strength of yours. It is in your partnership with God. Never forget that. Hallowed be your name. Number four, are we making progress? Let's see where we can stop. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Jesus is teaching, pray in this manner. Watch this. That you approach prayer that a believer who wants to approach prayer in a way and manner that he will get answers must be one who the entire scope of his prayer is hinged on seeing the will and the purposes of God coming to pass. Get my teaching for your glory. Please get it. Everyone get it. Write it and you can collect it from the media. It's free after service for your glory. Very powerful teaching. It is one big secret to my life. You know, I told you that the Lord told me years ago that, son, if you will let men see me, there is nothing I will not give you. Remember, you already know that your father is a giver. So you don't act as if he does not want to give. Thy kingdom, I prioritize what you want. It is not just what I want. I'm not using you just to get needs. I'm here to promote your interest is bigger than what I want. Find out in scripture, those who put themselves under every kind of inconvenience to advance his kingdom, to see that his interest was promoted, notice their lives. He made a wonder out of their lives. Esther was not just in the palace to enjoy. When she was there, she would have remained there. They would kill the Jews and eventually kill her, but she remembered, I'm here to promote something. I'm the only woman who has that kind of access to the king. I will use my access for his glory. Eventually, Esther is lifted, Mordecai is lifted, her man dies, the Lord changes, Christ is glorified. Herein lies the destruction that comes with our selfish prayer. This is how an average believer prays. Look up, please. When it's as if we are entering a room, we pray two or five minutes tongues very quickly to just warm the atmosphere. Lord, I thank you. You are the lion of the tribe of Judah. Uh, as if we are rapping. Uh, you are the rose of Sharon. You are the, if not you that is lifting me. And the Holy Ghost is watching you. And angels are watching you. They are seeing the selfishness. Bible say enter into his gate with thanksgiving. It's, you are just passing the gate, passing the court, moving around, and then, um, God, well now that I finished, oh God, yeah, man, you have this. This is not the first time I'm saying this thing to you. It's not like you have forgotten, but I'm, I'm, I'm here again. Eh? You think you are praying? No, that's a lamentation. That's not prayer. Jesus is still. Remember, the disciples tried this thing, this method. It didn't work. That's why they say teach us to pray. We are tired of wasting our time. See, God is moved by the feelings of your pain. He's touched, but only his word compels action. Just because God is touched does not mean he will move. He does not move by emotions. He moves at the impulse of his word. I have learned in my life the power of putting the kingdom above you, above your needs. Ladies and gentlemen, I show you the way of true power in the kingdom. I show you the way to receive things you did not pray for. It's been my life. You can ask God. I'm telling you sincerely, and it's not because of what God has done in my life today. Less than 25% of my prayer is for me. 
Ah, Apostle, you have food on your table. No, it's not something I started today. It's been there like that. This need-driven prayer, you will see a believer spending six hours praying. And at the end of it, you say, Kai, you're a prayer warrior. Ask him, what were you doing for the six hours? If he tells you he was praying in tongues, clap for him because he has done well. But most times he will tell you that six hours, praise and worship took 10 minutes or so. Are we together? Maybe listening to a tape for 25 minutes that you off in anger because it was not saying what you wanted to hear. Are we together? And the remaining part of that prayer is just a pouring out of lust and selfishness. Lord, the other day, look at this girl, my junior. She's now married. I'm, I'm saying this, you are the only one I can talk to. Like, yes, he's Abba, but he's not stupid. Remember, we say, hello, his name. Is this how many of us pray? So don't just say, I prayed and things are not working. What did you do? The disciples said, teach us to pray. All my younger ones are working. God, what is this? Yeah? The other day, look at the person I taught in primary school. I can't believe that it was this guy that did a transfer of 10,000. Now, how do you expect God to answer that prayer? Be God yourself and imagine a prayer warrior called you praying to God. Mark that script. But imagine a believer with so much burden and pain and yet he comes and says, Lord, I know that I have my needs, but I want you to know that your interest is before me. And you mean it. You know anything you say, heaven looks at your heart before they mark the script. You can talk grammar with your mouth and they look. This, is, this guy is a liar. He's just talking stories. It's just because he's in a prayer group and there are many people. That's not the truth in his heart. Your kingdom reign. Your kingdom reign above all, above all. Lord, your kingdom reign. Your kingdom reign above all, above all. In my life. In my life, Lord, your kingdom reign, your kingdom reign in my life, in my life, Lord, your kingdom reign, your kingdom reign, your kingdom reign, your kingdom reign. me my brothers and my sisters it's a powerful strategy that you approach God Lord I'm praying for koinonia I have needs but I suspend it to pray Lord bring souls Lord change lives people are on their way traveling to come now pray and the devil will be saying keep praying there is God in a hurry does God have opening hours and closing hours what is the rush for It is through faith to leave your need and stand. Let me tell you how to get a rich man's attention. Find where his eyes is looking and go there. If a rich man is thirsty, you get his attention by going where water is to bring water. You don't stand and say, oh God, tend to me. He's busy. That approach is not the best analogy, but I'm telling you this. You want to get God's attention. Look for where his eyes and his heart is. Oh, I'm, lift, I'm lifting people in this ministry. Lord, let me be part of those who pray this into. I'm praying. And the devil is saying, are you aware that your mother is in the hospital? Are you aware that she's about to die? And while you are praying, Lord, I'm praying. Let lives change. Thank you, oh God. They are being saved. I decree and declare. Friday's meeting is another encounter. Lord, as your people sit under this atmosphere, their lives are changing. And while the angels are wandering, 
this man has an option. This is what Solomon did that touched God. He says, Solomon, I give you a free check. And Solomon said, Lord, forget about my needs. I know that you want your people led. I am young. Give me an understanding heart so that I can lead your people. And God says, you got it. The pattern was honored because you did not ask for the life of your enemy or for money and all of this. I will give you wisdom and an understanding heart like no other king. I said, but with it, I will give you riches. I will give you wealth. I will give you honor. You remind God about yourself when you forget about yourself. Selfish driven prayer. I'm not saying you don't bring petitions. Don't get me wrong. You can take out time. But many of us, I can tell the truth sincerely between you and God. This whole year, I'm not sure you have prayed for any other person aside from yourself. It's always me. It tells, even when you come to stand for your family for prayer. What I, I'm not putting you under pressure. Uh, Apostle, well, forget uh, my mother. How is she? Well, her leg has started improving. Just leave her. But this thing now is me. When it is all about you, you would not command the attention of God. Thy kingdom come, thy will, your intent be enforced. I show you the secret of very great men. They decrease and his purpose is increased through them. And while that is happening, requests you are not raising, God is answering. Listen, the Shunammite woman forgot about the issue of her barrenness. And started paying attention to the prophet. Every time prophet Elisha will be passing. And they say, we discern this is a holy man of God. In other words, he's always passing to execute the will of God. I know I'm barren. But forget about my barrenness. Let us find a way and build him a room. Let us put books. Let us put light. And when the prophet came and enjoyed the prophet by himself, he started telling Gehazi, he said, what can we do for this woman? In other words, it is not consistent with God's character to go all the way and then he forgets about you. You cannot outgive God. So when you forget about yourself, you make God to remember you. And he said, God, don't leave me. He said, mm -mm. He told the woman, listen, the, the woman told the prophet, he said, well, I dwell among, he said, the prophet said, should I talk to the governor for you? He said, I dwell among my own people. And Gehazi just said, sir, this woman is barren. He said, that's it. Imagine if every time she was passing and they put a chariot to stop Elisha and say, you are a prophet. Are you not, can't you see that your neighbor here is barren? The prophet will curse her and say, you better clear, you are, you are an interruption to my assignment. This I have learned about God. My heart is only concerned about what brings him glory. Priority is the heart and the intent of the Father. Not your needs. Not tea and bread. Your heavenly Father knows you have need of these things. Listen, let me tell you. Try this thing and do it with revelation and you will wonder at the hand of God. God, give me. 
God give me, God give me, God give me, God give me. And heaven is saying you are not profitable. Your prayer is not profiting the kingdom at all. Dissipating energy for hours. Lord give me, give me power, give me bread, give me tea, give me this, give me fame. Let me outshine. And while you are praying that, all God is seeing is flesh. Self. So it is not just that you are praying. Is God's heart a priority in your prayer? Apostle, I'm not an intercessor. You see it? It's not for intercessors. It's a pattern. In this manner, pray. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom kingdom come you think God does not know you have needs no. there are times you can dedicate honestly to pray for yourself read the Bible and find out how many times Jesus prayed for himself read your Bible from Mark chapter 4 when he started praying in the wilderness read it up until the time he went to heaven how many times did he pray look at the prayer of Jesus in John 17 father the hour has come Glorify now thy son, that thy son will glorify him. This is eternal life, that they may know thee, the one and true God. I pray for them, not that they will live, but that you will keep them. All that you have given me, I have kept, and none is lost, except the son of perdition, that scripture may be fulfilled. That they may know, this, he is praying for them. And it's a shame, let me tell you this, I, I don't mean, I'm not trying to speak bad. But if you are a man of God here or you have any kind of spiritual responsibility and you don't cry before God over your congregation, over your people, you will never have testimonies in that church. Keep prophesying in the open and don't pray in the secret. You will be surprised to see. It's the reason why many churches have only one, two, three people testifying because the truth is the men of God don't pray for the people. The true up the part of the apostolic ministry of Paul, Ephesians, for this cause, I Paul, I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, that He may grant unto you, not to me, thy kingdom come. Please reorder your life this night. Reorder your plan this night. Hear what I'm telling you. I show you the way that makes you successful. Reorder your life. Lord, you have put me a priest as this in this family. Things are not going well in my family. I know that I have needs. But for now, oh God, I'm dedicating these two days. And I'm not mentioning anything about myself. It is about my father's salvation. It's about my mother's healing. It's about my sister's barrenness issue. Uh, that is a priesthood ministry. Of course, I know why you are spending three hours. Is it not because you are praying for yourself? When you are praying for others, five minutes is all right. Lord bless them. Just give them what money can buy and what money cannot buy in Jesus' name. Is that prayer? Hallowed be your name. Hallowed be your name. Hallowed be your name. On Fridays like this, my mind is just thinking koinonia. I'm just thinking, my, my entire, my mood, everything is as if I'm not feeling fine. The few times that I travel and I'm not here on Friday, you ask the people that travel with me. Once it's Friday or Sunday, whenever Koinonia is holding and I'm not around, once it's 5.30 towards 6, it's as if my, my mood just changes. I'm not, I don't, they, they quietly leave me alone. They, they have their way. They, they, everybody just leaves me alone and just leaves me and my God there to just sort ourselves. I can't even lie down to sleep. That's the most painful part. I remember the time I missed miracle service here. They brought me the video and I think it was Benga that was praying or so. When I had it, I said, off that thing, please quickly. Take it away from me. I sat down. I felt bad that night. I didn't know. It was as if I was going to die. That's the heart of a shepherd. Some of you would think and say, ah, who knows? Maybe somebody's first foot now was going they were going to give me line up and give me first food after service and god is saying look at the kind of shepherd who wants increase look at the kind of shepherd who wants extraordinary fruitfulness you are not thinking whether the people are blessed you are already thinking this person's first food 
his salary. When God does not bring increase, ask questions. What is the motive behind it? God sees my heart. I've told God many times, if it means me failing so that you will succeed, it's still a good bargain with God. I prayed and cried to him that much. There is almost nothing in my life, sincerely speaking, that I seek for myself. If I ever seek anything for myself, I can show you how it connects to God and his glory. I want you to check your desires. Check the content of your prayer. Huh? How does your prayer route to birthing the purposes of God? Lord, give me a husband. Give me a wife. No problem. Why? How, what do you mean why? Am I a small child? Are you blind? And God says, you see what we are saying now? Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Oh God, give me, come divine. Give me a child. Why? So that you will have a prophet. I've been sensing in the spirit and I read that there are prophets who will move in this season. Lord, I donate my womb. And God says, you are talking to me now. You are talking to me now. I see your pregnancy can now become a ministry if it will birth the purposes of God. See, a ministry is not just standing on the pulpit. It is whatever comes out of you that can birth his purposes. Lord, give me anointing. Why? Why do you want the anointing? I've, I've gone through failure in my life. Oh God, you know my background. And God says, that's not enough reason. Lord, I'm watching people. I saw the other day, this family, they were believers. They became non-believers simply because the power of God could not be demonstrated in that family. Lord, can you make me a bridge between someone's going to hell and his conversion? I donate myself and God says, you are talking to me now. You are ready for real fire from heaven. After this manner, pray. Prayer warriors, hear me. Most people do not pray correctly. They pray voluminously. They pray extensively. But the content of their prayer reduce it from the eyes of God's will. Very small, very small portion of it is kingdom. Let me tell you, if everything God gives you he sees that his kingdom will be represented there. I tell you sincerely, you will get more things without praying. All this job that many of you want. You see, telling God, if you give me a job, I'll give you the first food. That's, that's nonsense. That's not, that's not, God is not looking for first food. What will you do with the other foods? God is looking for everything. Not all your money. That's not what I'm saying. Your life, Lord, in this office, you need an ambassador. I'm, I'm available. Lord, as you are searching for ambassadors, I'm available. And God says, are you? Fine. And you will see your CV that you submitted since 2014. Someone will wake up in the night to go and dust it. This I know about God. Align your heart to God's purposes and watch the wonder-working power of answered prayer. God will shake systems and make sure that he comes to you. It is why covenants are powerful because you have now bound yourself. God knows that human beings vacillate. So when they come under covenant, it's an oath. That means they are aware of the consequence and yet they bound themselves. It's a token of seriousness. So God honors it. Hallelujah. Let me touch one more. Let's pray in the spirit one minute. Just one minute. Heba la su se bara ashi. Skala baranda gadebra diki. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done.
Kala batu sada berada di depan batu sia. Skibaraha sodes kala banda kata batu sia. Let's continue. Verse 11. Verse 11, please. Let's read together. One, two, read. Give us this day our daily bread. Notice the progression. Now that my life and all about me is for you, as a subset of the provisions that will allow me to focus on your kingdom coming, it will be difficult for me to focus on the matters of your kingdom, oh God, when certain constraints are there. So on account of my desire and my insistence to see your kingdom come, give me this day my daily bread. Are you seeing it now? You don't demand daily bread in isolation. It is part of the entire program that can allow his kingdom come. Kai, this is powerful. notice that when it comes to God's kingdom he doesn't want to even give you monthly he wants to give you daily remember you are asking for monthly and God is saying I am this passionate about making you comfortable to serve my purposes I decide to make my benevolence daily so that there is no excuse give us this day not our bread Give us this day according to your ordinance. You say that every 24 hours there is an allocation. What is today's allocation? Give it to me. And God is saying you on legal right, you can place, help those outside. You can place a demand and say, Lord, I am here. Give me this admission because I have made up my mind to do this. Give me this, give me that. Send me prosperity. Open up doors for me. Lord, I'm unable. I have a heart for your people. But I cannot give. The reason why I cannot give is because the means is not there. And God says, I will not even do monthly with you. Let's go daily. I know many people never believe that there is something called daily bread. Notice, not daily flour. Bread is processed flour already. Please understand what I'm teaching you. There are times that God gives you seed. There are times God gives you flour. But there are times because the king's business requires haste. He will make the bread and give you. It's called prepared blessings. So don't be angry when God gives you an intelligence to attract business people and gives another person a house, daily bread. That's bread already. A house that is built. Because God calculates and says, if this guy starts a building project, for the next three years, it may distract him. And it's at a strategic point. Bread. Was it not in heaven that bread that was made already from the oven of heaven? This is not a parable. Real bread came to the earth. It's not a parable. It's a parable. The Bible said there was a certain day. Real bread came. The Bible calls it angel's bread. Manna from heaven. And they ate it. Prepared blessings. When God says it's a year of extraordinary fruitfulness, don't just expect flour or expect him to bless what you plant. You can step into prepared blessings. See, prepared blessings, you always hear me say, it is a time redemption system. It is not everything you must build by yourself. God can build certain things and give you. Is the Lord speaking to us tonight? That someone can come and say, man of God, this is what I will be doing. You don't have any business. You don't have any investment, but the Lord spoke to me that every month for the rest of your life, one million, 
is coming from me to you until I die or until Jesus comes. Now, it's not a license to be lazy, but that's prepared blessings. Daily bread. So when you say, God, give us our daily bread, he said, what did you do that you are saying I should give you daily bread? Daily bread is for those who will stand to see that his will be done. If you are not ready, go and look for oven. Go and look for the farm. Go and look for the seed. Go and look for the baker. Look for the yeast. Make your bread. But when you say, oh God, more than just these things, you see my heart. Kai, God. You see God. See, this is why you hear the testimonies of some people and it will annoy you. You'll be like, what is all this one? Someone is saving 100, 100,000 every month. And I'm not saying that is wrong. You want to buy a car. How much? 5.2. Thank God. You are saving 100, 100,000 every month. But another person says, Lord, whether it's the car or it's me, everything belongs to you. You know this. And someone will just come and say, I'm leaving this country. I bought this car, six million. What do you have? He says, I have one. He says, just bring it. Did you buy the car? How much is the duty of that car? Prepared blessings. If you ever desire prosperity in isolation to God's purposes, you are already in error. Completely. The value of good things it is that they give us the allowance to serve him. See, this is the foundation. And I'm glad tomorrow is a workers meeting, um, a workers retreat and all of that. We'll take it from there. Our retreat has started this night. It's very important. Listen, I continue to teach everybody who belongs to this ministry and connected to this family. This is the core of our ideology. That everything we ever press for, it is to be able to give us the allowance to serve the purposes of the kingdom. So when you see us teach on wealth and abundance or the anointing or speed, none of these things are taught in isolation. They are useless when they are in isolation. They are only taught with respect to the role they play. When we hate poverty and hate demons and cast them out, whether through teaching or deliverance or whatever, the reason is because we have discerned how they interrupt God's agenda. So if I cause poverty from your life, it's not just because poverty is bad. It's because it, I have discerned that it has an effect. The impedance that it provides in your making spiritual progress is why we cause it. I don't care what stands your way. If it will not allow you serve God and not allow you advance, it deserves the judgment of God. Are we together? Why do we minister speed? Why do we pray for favor? None of these things are valuable themselves in isolation. But once your heart is stayed on birthing his purposes, then you can stand with confidence and say, give me this day. There is an allocation for today. Mm. There is. There is. There is an allocation for the day. When Jesus finished his crusade, three days, the people were hungry. If he sent them like that, something will be wrong about his representing God. And he said, don't send them that way. Feed them. The people said, where are we going to feed them? And they brought the young lad, Andrew, brought a young lad with five loaves and two fish. Jesus blessed it and said, let me show you how the economy of heaven works. And they distributed it. Everybody ate. Why did they eat? Because they attended the crusade. Not because they were roaming around the road. The only people who received that miracle were those who were around that crusade ground. If you were not in that crusade ground, go to your bakery. See, there is a yoke that is given to non-kingdom people. That yoke should not be in your life. Your passion for God should exempt you. Please believe what I'm telling you. I will never allow my life whether financially or otherwise, to subscribe to the burden, to be in the similitude of the burden of a man who does not carry the program of God. Our experience should not be the same. Are we together?
oh dear our time is gone i want to close early today because we have our retreat let's do one <laughs> give us our daily bread god is a giver and the bread is daily don't forget daily is not a parable daily is daily if I do not experience favor after 24 hours, I will go for a retreat. Now, our lives are in levels, but I'm saying this is where you press into. It's true. There are times if I experience favor, maybe once, twice a year, the name of the Lord be praised. But as I've grown to know God and I've seen the excellency that comes with bearing his name, I have seen that there is a provision for my daily bread. There's nothing the devil can do about it. But the people that do know their God, they shall be strong and they shall do exploits. Next verse. Let's look at verse 12. Maybe we'll stop there. Ah, this is a good one. Forgive us our sins or debt as we forgive our debtors. Now he's teaching how to pray. <laughs> Let me teach you something here that is very powerful. Number one, this has nothing to do with sin or debt. You see, when you study scripture, you have to trust the spirit of revelation to open truth for you. What is the revelation behind this? Forgive us our debt or as our sins as we forgive our debtors. Let me tell you this. Number one, it means all men are human. It's a revelation that when you approach God in prayer, listen very carefully, that in your petition, something should happen to you. There is a knowledge about God you should know that God knows. Your prayer is not necessarily answered because of the flawlessness and the accuracy of your compliance. That there is a provision in God's dealing with you. He knows you are human and that that same revelation is something you must carry as you approach men watch this all men are human all men fail all men grow weary the revelation behind this statement is to maintain an allowance for the humanity of men in your dealing with the subject of prayer be, I'm, I know why I'm saying this because many religious people say, ah, forgive us our sins. Ah, that's minus me. Let me tell you, he's not, I know you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. The idea here is not sin or death. The idea is the fact that whoever can come under the influence of this must be human. Only God is immune from this. Are you getting the idea? And so he's saying that when God is dealing with you, he has left provision for your humanity. He knows you are frail. Psalms 100 and verse 3. When God opened my eyes to this scripture, it blessed me in no small way. Psalms 100 and verse 3. Read with me. One, two, read. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. Uh -huh. It is he that made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. The sheep of his pasture he knows oh i'm sorry psalms 103 103 103 that's that's a scripture for another psalms 103 13 and 14 who forgiveth all thine iniquities who healeth all thy disease are we together verse 13 like as a father pitieth his children so the Lord pitied them that fear him. 14. For he knoweth our frame. He remembereth that we are dust. This is God. He knows that, look, by and large, man is dust. Dust. That's why sometimes you can be ask, asking something. And God already knows what you really wanted to ask. He knows that what you are asking and the foolish way you are, pump, you are, you are carrying is not your, you are weak as a man. So he bypasses what your mouth is saying and answers what your heart is really praying. This is a God of heaven. 
You can pray and say, oh God, help me and kill my husband. And God knows that you don't mean to kill your husband. It's just that you are angry. Your husband has done something. In your heart, you are saying, I love this man. Why does he continue to hurt me? And your heart is really saying, God, change him for me. That's the one God answers. The, oh God, kill my husband. God just allows you. Or Lord, if I don't give you this tithe by tomorrow, 12 o'clock, let me die. God knows. You know, most, most of us have prayed those kinds of unbelieving prayers. And as soon as the money came, you forgot. Till 12 midnight. And you are still alive. <laughs> Maintain allowance for the humanity of men. It is, it is something you receive in the place of prayer and is a mindset that you have as you approach prayer. It is not just about forgiveness of sins. Uh -uh. The Bible says if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. That means the Holy Spirit is not in you. Are we together now? So he's not necessarily talking about sin as it were. He's talking about the fact that men are frail. Let me tell you this. It's a powerful revelation. Matthew chapter 18. You will read something that will bless you now. Matthew 18. A long reading but will be very fast. Starting from 21. Matthew 18, 21. Look up, please. I'm reading. Just write it and look. Then Peter came to him and said, Lord, how oft shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? So he's talking about letting go. Are we together? Verse what now? 22. Jesus said to him, I say not unto thee until seven times, but until seventy times seven. 23. Therefore, now watch this. Jesus is about to explain. Every time you don't understand what Jesus is saying, whether you ask him or not, he will go ahead to use a parable and guide you so that he doesn't leave you in confusion. Are we together? Yes. He said, therefore, the kingdom of heaven is likened unto a certain king. Look up, please. Which would take account of his servants. 24. Read on, please. And when he had begun to reckon, one was brought unto him which owed him 10,000 talents. An offender he's owing him are we together verse 25 but for as much as he had not to pay his Lord commanded him to be sold you know in ancient times they, they would sell like slave market they would sell the man sell the children sell everything the Lord commanded him to be sold and his wife and children and all that he had and payment to be made 26 watch this the servant fell down and worshipped him saying Lord have patience with me I will pay thee all the master knew that he's just talking because of pressure he didn't have the power to do it are you seeing now forgive us our sins it's a revelation it's more than the issue of sin and death next verse then the Lord of that servant was what moved with compassion and loosed him and forgave him that means he saw that even that talk he's talking, he doesn't have the power to honor it. Next verse. But the same servant, uh -huh, the same servant went out and found one of his, he was passing the street and just saw someone passing too and remembered that that person owes him a hundred pence and he laid hands on him and took him by the throat. You see that? Come. This is it. He took him by the throat. Are we together? Say ye, pay me, thou that owest. Look at, look at this man now. Next verse. And his fellow servant fell down the same way. Are you seeing now? You went to God in prayer. You know what he did. Now it's your turn. He fell down and besought him saying, have patience with me. Same words. And I will pay thee all. Let's look at what this our man did. And he would not but went and cast him into prison. Till he should pay the debt. 31. So when his fellow servants saw what he had done. They were very sorry. And came and told their Lord all that was done. 32. Then his Lord after that he had called him said unto him. O thou wicked servant. I forgive thee all thy debt. Because thou desirest me shouldest not thou also have had 
compassion. So it's about compassion, much more than forgiveness. A state of compassion, even as I've had pity on you, is a revelation that when you approach God, know this about God. Are we together? That God has kept a dimension of his compassion knowing you are human knowing you are frail and he's saying even from that place of prayer carry that template as you relate with people koinonia is quiet now this one has touched rabbi you know all the other part was god you demanding receiving this one now demands that there is a reciprocity from you you are just thinking about somebody right now ah, somebody that i will jack him like this man could you be that person show me compassion oh god i will never forgive you from the uh, how they say it over over my, my, my till i die and god is watching what you are doing see you will never be able to walk in the world of men till you keep an allowance for the frailty and the weakness of men men are weak men are frail sometimes they would disappoint you when there is an interest to protect but they are men as a pastor as a man of God if you don't know this you'll be in trouble Sam promised me that he will buy a car for me by March he even wrote it he called it a vow what is today's date today is September I'm just joking it's an example and Sam has not brought the car and Sam has the boldness to sit in front when I'm preaching and I say lift up your hands to receive the prophecy and he will even kneel down and lift up his hand in my mind I'm already saying minus you my grace will not work for you again I will not waste and not, you are an unprofitable compassion there is no such thing like we don't have this in our family what family are you talking about all these excuses that people give say apostle we are not like that in our family once we 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 are warriors we fight to the finish then you should know what it means to be a believer see truly as a person i hardly get disappointed in men because the provision has been left already you see that apostle let me get a job you know i get a job this water is water bottle that they will start putting in there you are now a director you see let me teach you something ministers pastors hear me all these promises that you carry from members members promise me this lift up your eyes to the heavens and leave men home they will frustrate you i will pay rent for you for one month as my seed to your ministry by month two you will say i've changed my mind you know i didn't know that the the leaders will come back into power i was expecting that you see human beings we take your eyes away from men and look up to jesus christ alone the son of the living god are we together it's very very important do you have compassion can you forgive and more than forgiveness there are some of you if you are angry it's until god gives you a revelation of maybe hellfire or directly tell you help this person it's a bad spirit it's a wicked spirit that over my dead body talk be careful be careful there are husbands who cannot forgive their wives they are together there are wives who cannot forgive their husbands when they are 30 years in marriage, you say, you offended me the third year of marriage till today. I've not forgiven you. And yet we can go to God and say, Lord, thank you for your mercy. God, if I don't pray three hours for the next one month, let me die on my way to Kaduna. 
you didn't even, you didn't even pray even for 10 minutes yet you have finished your masters it's called, it's called compassion listen i'm trying to plant in us something believers must be governed by a culture don't don't conquer the limitation of your earthly family there is no such thing like we are not like that nobody is born with compassion it's something that comes with revelation can you love and love genuinely some of us have black books huh? black uh, black books you write the names as wickedness even as Christ forgave that luggage will interrupt your prayer do you know one of the greatest ways to minister is to minister by love it's amazing how all of these encumbrances can unclog they can clog the flow of God's power I want to prophesy please come Pastor Femi I want to prophesy to Pastor Femi right now and I stand here but I remember he kept me waiting at the restaurant the other day he promised me that he was coming and forgot and he left me there now I'm not justifying what he did for instance but now you want to prophesy and that anger and that annoyance you see that the nature of your prophecy will justify that it's not God that sent it because God gives good things when you walk by love even your health tells there are people who are sick today not because of oppression the way they think they think until veins the doctor these veins that come out on people's faces because of anger they are, they are imagining yet their hands are physically you cannot live like that you cannot be productive that way when they see other people just giving god joy koinonia is done and they are greeting ah, Pastor Femi, how are you they are just angry and they are waiting for who is angry like them so that i say <laughs> come now that you are we are no. rejoice in the lord always and again i say rejoice learn to rejoice learn to forgive learn to let go it's okay it's okay the pot was not your own the food was not your own you know it's wrong you don't see a pot that you don't have anything and just go and eat what is there i was hungry i had visitors sometimes the people may not even be repentant just let go this is how unforgiveness works i'm holding him i'm not moving either are you seeing now i can't move holding him i'm holding him now yet i want to move i've kept him bound and i'm bound myself forgiveness is a type of giving there is a type of giving called forgiveness when you can forgive you are a giver it's not only seeds that you give forgive us our sins all men are humans don't kill your child because of the report card he brought him all men are humans they increase salary your son came back with a report card second to the last you want to kill him he's a human being i'm not justifying what he's doing and i'm not saying it's painful to raise school fees don't kill the boy just because he brought that result the boy you are killing today can be a prime minister tomorrow are you hearing what i'm saying yes learn to be there for people i've taught it in this ministry may god make you the shoulder for wounded people to be able to lean on that you are the one when you see people crying you are not the one who say look at this person crying crocodile uh, tears you're a wicked person to see a human being crying and you are still saying it's crocodile tears that you can stand and tell the person look i don't know why you are crying but let's agree can you believe that i don't have transport no problem no problem let's go we'll share together the attitude that is the attitude of a prayer warrior that when you want to pray when you approach god you know that you are human that's why i like this guy's song um what's his name um K strings that many song it's a very powerful song because it's a revelation of the frailty of men men are frail 
men are very frail. There was a day, these people who beg, we are going to pray shortly. Some of these people who beg, they just stood at my gate. The kind of knock that they knocked that gate. You know, even the polite, it's as if they carried stone. Bang, 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 bang. Ah, I said, my God, what is going on? Immediately, I opened, I just saw the woman backing a child, having one. I was, I was sad because I was praying and it was a big interruption. I looked at the woman, I was wondering, and she looked at me. I could see her hunger ravaged face. I looked at the baby and then I just remembered. I said, let's assume I was the one or that was my mother. And then I said, what are you looking for? Then she now lied. I said, madam, you are lying. She said, okay, yes, she lied, but this is really the thing. I can't imagine that all that drama is happening there. I can close my gate and say, carry your... Instead of you to just beg, you have, you have now spoiled my mind and you are doing this. Compassion. There's this thing we call losing temper. I cast that spirit from your life forever. One more time, I cast that spirit from your life forever. I cast that spirit from your life forever. If there is anyone here under the influence of such a spirit, I'm saying it again by the grace of God and the spirit of the living God. I command that spirit to come out of your life now. Some of you can carry bottle and break somebody's head. Huh? Some of you can carry shoe and nail, hammer, anything. It's a demonic thing. When you are approaching the prayer ministry, you must be able to replace all of those devilish things with genuine compassion. How can you be a father when you don't have that, that allowance? Children are children. They will be stupid every once and again. Are we together? Someone was sending a text to someone to beg me for money that I will give him. Then I think maybe he forgot and forwarded the text to me. He wrote the number and told the person how how to say it. Now I'm not looking, I am Abba, so I'm not he had already told the person what not to say and what to say. When I saw it, I looked at the text and then the person later realized that I made a mistake. The person could not even, I tried to call the person, the person did not even pick because he just felt, this. I'm, I'm, I'm dead, I'm finished. So while the person was complaining and doing that, I did a transfer to that person's account. And then I said, this part, give the person you want to pay. This one is for you. That was it. Then the person replied me and said, I'm ashamed of myself. I said, no. I said, what then is the excellency of being a father? <laughs> one who has that mindset, I also receive it in the place of prayer. The grace to give allowance to people. Allowance to people. There are times people are talking to me and I know they are lying. I know what they are saying is not true. But I can discern. They are not lying because they are wicked people. If you are going through the pressure they are going through, sometimes you may be tempted to be like that. And it is that ability to be able to not endorse what they are doing, but override it with Father. Are we together? If God can show you that kind of compassion and you don't have for many, you are not praying according to God's pattern. You cannot say, Lord, look down. My Listen, there are many of us now, what is happening in our family is just because the man that was wicked is your father. 
but the truth is that that father man is under the causes of many people because of the way that man behaved for other people are we, are we together now and then you now see and say ah my father was a doctor many people he now destroyed many people they've caused them oh god overlook my father's wrongs and god says what of the people in your company what of the people in your company someone was overwhelmed with the school fees of the children and he quickly carried one bag of water to rush and go and sell it and you cut the person and the person just knelt down and was rolling there and said i'm not a thief sir and my wife is in the hospital i've gone through pain i'm not saying endorse him but have the eyes to hear both the mouth and the hearts of men you cannot deal with everybody generically Many times I don't like to see people without invitation because of how it interrupts my plans. But there are people that come to my house and knock and I look at them and once I see them, I can discern the heaviness in their hearts. And I say, although this is not the way I do it, but I have to attend to you. Listen, let me tell you this. If you do not show compassion the day you will need it, that day, that's the day you will know that it is good to sow seeds of compassion. Many of us are not compassionate. Are we together? We'll stop here. We'll take part three. I'll finish this up. Then I'll now show you the dynamics of prayer. But this is very powerful. Our Father, who art in heaven, faith, hallowed be your name, reverence. Your kingdom come, priority. Give us this day your needs met on account of your desire to see his kingdom come and then forgive us we stand forgiving every one of us because of his mercy and grace why will you not show the same grace to others some of you after this night's prayer meeting you need to go back and just call your younger sister your younger brother and he said you know what it's three years now it's over with all of that. We cannot be fighting. Some of you can even be here at Koinonia. After Koinonia, you just walk up to that department and just hug the person. And you, when they hug you, make sure you don't behave like a devil. After this preaching that I've spent time to preach. When somebody comes to make peace, how are you? Don't just sit down and say, but, but you know, there's no special ceremony. We are all sinners. We were saved by the grace and the mercy of God. The same Lord is rich unto all. Yes. You do that and see what happens. The power of God can flow. Now you can trust what you see. You can trust what you hear. You cannot be receiving revelation under a, with a heart full of bitterness and envy and believe it's coming as pure as it left heaven. That impurity in you, you believe it just passed like that? No, sir. I don't trust a man with bitter spirit. You cannot minister to me. You cannot prophesy to me. There will be a corruption. It's why men of God must have a large heart to love. Ladies, you must have a large heart to love. This is to get offended. You must crush it today. We're going to pray for the next five minutes or so. Anger. Rage. Over my dead body until, you know, until I die. Stop all those things. You are a child of God. There is a pattern of prayer. Compassion, love. As I approach God, I approach him with joy and gladness. I know that he's my father. I know that I can cry my heart and pour my heart to him. Are we together? someone's hands hold the hands of someone teach us to pray to pray in a way and manner that produces results believers hear me the way many of us are praying we are not going to get God's attention that way is the reason why ministers stand on stage and they speak and there is no backing from heaven they may fast they may pray 
They may do night vigils, but it looks like God is running away from them. And the key is not just impartation. Tonight's teaching is like water purifying every dross in your heart. It could be that you are not approaching God. You are approaching God as a superior option. No. It can be that you are not approaching him by faith. You are waiting for visions. You are waiting for this and the devil continues to play with your mind. The moment you are praying, you will now have a dream and you trust the dream more than the word. It is true that you are praying and now you went back to sleep after the prayer and you saw one of your legs tied in a rope. A believer who loves God will look at the authority and the power of scripture more than that experience. That the word of God can superimpose itself upon any situation. Not to turn back and say, I've been praying and this is working. Satan knows that the sense realm is more real to you than the word of God. So he will continue to manipulate experiences in the sense realm to help you use it to be assessing whether you are making progress. The basis for progress is the authority of the word of God, not experiences. They can come, they can be there, but they are not the reason. They are only support systems. Thy kingdom come. I cannot burn this enough. Take away selfishness from your life. Reorder your desires back to God. Ask yourself why. Not just what you want. Why do you want it? I want fame. Why? What for? I want money. I want to be a billionaire. I want to be a millionaire. What for? So that when people see me, they can know. And God says nonsense. People's souls are perishing. People are dying. You come up with a mundane desire and you want God to endorse it. No, sir. Apostle, I want to become a very powerful man of God. Why? Because I have a group of five friends and all of them are anointed. They've gone ahead of me. But none of them has been able to meet you to receive impartation. So let me receive fast so that when I go, and God says, look at this. I can pray for you with all my heart. I guarantee you, you will not receive anything. Because I'm not the originator. I'm only a steward of the grace. Give us our daily bread. When you subscribe to the desire of God, it is all right to ask for your daily bread. Not even monthly. Your daily bread cannot come from your job. Your daily bread comes from his hands. I should be able to see the difference between your salary and your father's benevolence. I should see the difference. I should see an alert in your account as a result of your monthly salary. I should see an alert in your account sent by God. And then forgive us. Compassion. People will wrong you. When I pray for couples and I counsel couples, sometimes they are happy, they hug myself in my presence and they say, I will never do it again. And I know they are joking. Your lifetime is too long to not do it again. You will shout at her. It's true. You are born again. She will shout at you. One day she will almost want to carry the frying pan and slap you. So, in advance, you forgive. And never allow that be a determining factor whether the marriage will continue or end. Otherwise, you will not be able to marry successfully on earth. Except you wait for the marriage, the last, the, the marriage between the lamb and his bride. That is the only marriage that the Bible guarantees that is ideal. Any other one on earth, you are joking. Where you see two couples laughing. Some of them are going through three times worse what you are going through. They have learned how to laugh, not just through the storm, above it, under it, around it. Go ahead and pray in the spirit. Lord, my time has come. Are you praying, Koinonia? Lord, this health thing, I can't remain sick forever. No. 
this SS genotype, this HIV, this cancer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just one more prayer point and then we'll begin to minister. I'd like you to say, Lord, grace to not doubt you tonight. Please lift your voice and pray. Don't be a doubter. Lord, I believe in you. Lord, I believe in you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me add one more prayer point in our lives. I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, whatever must come upon my life for me to move forward. Hold on. Let it come. And whatever must leave me. I have no loyalty to you. I don't care where you came from. Tonight I part ways with you forever. Lift your voice and pray. anointing that must land upon my life today. Every grace, every spirit, every dimension tonight you must come upon my life and everything that must leave me. I'm tired of any luggage upon my destiny. Koinonia, are you praying? Those online, make sure you are praying. Right where you are, at your home, so wherever you are streaming from. Hallelujah. 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 One of the graces I'm trusting God to come upon our life is grace for accelerated advancement. Listen, listen. There are many of us, our pace of movement is slow. You can't look at your life and say, A, B, C has happened within this time. It's not a good testimony. I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, I must move. Oh, I must move. There must be advancement. The overflows. Make sure you are praying. God is sharing you where you are. Yes, oh God, I'm parting ways forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. You must contend with prophecy. Oh, this bad luck upon my life must leave. I was not cursed like that. Even if it's a curse, it must go. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It's a war unto them who are ease in Zion. There is enough function tonight to deliver the result you desire, except you are not interested. If you truly are interested and you are angry enough, Tonight is not the time to spectate and pinch and gist. Anybody does that kind of thing for you tonight, know that the spirit is using that person. 
you can't come here and waste your time. Hallelujah. I'm about to pray for you. I'm about to speak. Please, I want you to pray. Mention every negative thing that you know has happened, patterns in your life that you know must change and say, God, arise for me tonight. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, it must go over my family. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now listen. 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 Before God deals with our lives, we are going to be praying first and foremost that God will deal with our families. See, let me tell you something. It's not your fault that you came from that family. But it's your fault if you allow what came from there to destroy you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Believe what I'm saying, oh Koinonia. Believe what I'm saying. I love you too much to not lie to you. There are, there are ties and strongholds that are stopping people from rising. Lift your hands, everybody. Every high thing must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. You overcome. You overcome. Every high thing must come down. You wear the victor's crown. You overcome. Every high thing must come down. Lift your hands. I want to pray. Now listen. Don't get too used to the fact that it's just about speaking and then people fall under the anointing and come be serious while prayers are going. Because it is at the word of God they respond. They are listening to me. I'm speaking. But until the command is given, there is nothing to confirm. I want to pray. Many of you will be very surprised. Open up your spirit. It's time for God to visit you and visit your family. Hallelujah. Lift your hands, please. My God. God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm seeing in the realm of the spirit pointed arrows. Listen. Pointed arrows. Pointed arrows. And on those arrows I see like papers placed on the arrows containing the names of people, names of families, names of territories. That's what the Lord is showing me right now. And we're going to pray. Listen. The power of God is going to come very strongly upon people. It's, it's not just you but your family. Are we together? And once that happens, know that the time has come. You pray it and declare that deliverance. Lift your hands. I want to pray now. Father, you brought us here to change lives, change testimonies. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is giving me a very crazy instruction. Just lift your left hand. Be stupid. I've started my stupidity. Just follow me quietly. Just lift your left hand up to God and let me do the speaking. You don't have to say anything. Please, all those who I'm going to speak to now that the power of God comes on them, let's begin to have them outside. <sighs> Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray right now. 
my God. I'm seeing so many people. I don't even know what I'm doing. I'm just responding to the spirit. Lord, you ask us to lift our left hands up. Whatever that means, there are people. I see fire right now. It's going to begin to come on people. Lord, the moment that comes on their family, let there be massive deliverances. At the count of four, that will happen now. One, two, three, four. Bring them out. Bring them out. Bring them out right now, inside, outside. I'm seeing the spirit of God. There's fire moving to families. Please, let's save time. At the word of the Lord, I place the word of the Lord upon that situation of witchcraft. Inside, outside. It's over, it's over, it's over. It's over. I come with a word of prophecy. I prophesy as I've been commanded. Miracles, deliverances for families. Enough is enough, oh God. Bring them. There are so many people outside. So many people outside. All the overflows. I see miracles. It's like fire. It's like fire. Hallelujah. Keep your hands down. I'm seeing fire. And it's going to come upon the heads of people. And the Lord is saying it is still the deliverance. Lord, where are they? Where are they? Where are they? Right now, all over the congregation. I prophesy it like fire. I see like an eruption. A volcanic eruption. Coming on the heads of people. The heads of people. Shake it, take it out. Where you are, the fire will meet you there. Where you are, where you are. The enemy has done this. We command every havoc. We command every havoc. I tell you, I see deliverance for many families. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Say in the name of Jesus. I command every spirit. Causing the tragedies. In my family. Be exposed now. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. The light shines in the darkness. The light shines in the darkness. As you are praying. The power of God will come upon you. As you are praying, the power of God will come upon you. Be exposed. The spirits eating up finances, eating up joy, eating up peace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. I see written on this pulpit altars, and I want to pray. An altar is a platform erected by men that grants access to spiritual operations. Altars, 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 altars. At the count of seven, I tell you many people, this is not just families now. One, two, three, four, get ready. Five, six, seven, right now. Right now, right now, right now. Altars catch fire. Altars catch fire. Catch fire. Catch fire. Catch fire. Catch fire. Shake it, take a poro sotoba. Lift your
your hands, everybody. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. The Lord is asking me to call situations. The moment I call them, all those who are victims of it, the power of God will come upon them. Please, we are going to be fast. Right now I pray, the spirit of failure upon people. I'm seeing it. Lord, wherever they are, right now, at the count of three, let there be an exposition. One, two, three, go, go, go. Failure, 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 causing failure in lives, failure in destinies, failure in ministries, failure in business. Failure in academics. Every form of failure. Fire is coming on it right now. Fire is coming on it right now. Inside, outside. No, you can't stand it. It's your deliverance. It's your word. It's your prophecy. It's your word. That's why you came. Failure. Lift your hands, everybody. I'm seeing chains. And the Lord is saying, let delay leave my people. That's what I'm hearing. Lord, where are those whose lives have been under one spot? Inside and outside. At the count of three, I like you to shout, Jesus, delay is leaving now. One, two, three. Go, 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 go. Delay, delay, delay of all kinds, of all kinds. Harato Soto Peketesh. Delay. Delay. All kinds of delay. All kinds of delay. All kinds of delay. Be broken now. Now. Let her go in the name of Jesus. Let her go. I break that chain now. 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 That chain of delay. That chain of delay is broken over your life in the name of Jesus Christ. God is breaking delay. Listen. Hallelujah. I've prayed this prayer in this place before and the Lord is asking me to pray it again. That the destinies of men can be exchanged. So that you are walking. But you are not living your destiny. It's like you are living another person's life. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. Please take this prayer seriously. It will do wonders in your life. Lift your hands. Inside and outside. And you watch what will happen now. Lord I pray. My God. I'm telling you, all I'm seeing in this place is fire. Any man here, any woman whose destiny has been exchanged so that the life you are living is not your blueprint right now. Let the exchange, let there be another exchange, another exchange, another exchange. The power of God is coming on people right now, right now, right now. Release their destiny. Release that mother's destiny now. Release that mother's destiny now. My goodness. It's your destiny. It's your destiny. You can't leave another person's script. 
every witchcraft every manipulation I cause it now I cause it now I cause it now hallelujah hallelujah the Lord is asking me to pray for people with strange movements in their body I tell you I feel fire it's like people are literally bathing in fire strange movements I want to pray there are many ladies many mothers under this category right now in the name of Jesus I stretch my hands every stranger there is a lady you feel a physical snake physical snake moving on your body but right now in Jesus name at the count of three fire from the throne fire from the throne I command those spirits roaming around the bodies of God's people one two three go 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 now leave their bodies strange objects strange objects strange objects strange objects hallelujah hallelujah please sisters lift your hands i want to pray a very powerful prayer for our sisters The devil will prefer to get one woman to ten men. Because a woman is a gate in the realm of the spirit. I tell you, no power will stand. Something is about to jump out of somebody's life. Ay, ay, ay. Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Yeah. Break every chain. Let her go right now. Your destiny must open up in the name of Jesus Christ. Break every chain. Lift your hands, sisters. There are many ladies here under several oppressions. That's why many things are not working. But sisters, as surely as the Lord lives, at the count of three, I'd like you to shout Jesus. You will be surprised to see what will happen to you. Are you ready? One, two, three. Deliverance for you right now. Deliverance. Help them, my goodness. Please help them. Gates. 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 Be broken. Gates. Be broken. Tapataya. Gates be broken. Gates be broken. Gates be broken. I'm praying it again. Lift your hands. Ay, ay, ay. Every devil that came here with you must let you go. Lift your hands. There are sisters. There is already a programming on your destiny to fail, a programming to be barren. Who is this God? that can look into time wherever they are at the count of three may the power of God fish them out one two three take that fire take that fire take that fire I open your destiny every lady every sister you are a gate you are a gate in the realm of the spirit Mighty deliverance, mighty breakthrough, mighty breakthrough, mighty breakthrough is over, is over, is over by the power of the Holy Ghost. Over, over, over.
Break every chain. Break every chain. Yeah. Break every chain. Hallelujah. Now I want to pray for the brothers. Lift your hands. Listen, let me tell you. There is a spirit that makes men not to be productive. Hear me. It's a, it's, it's a mighty deliverance that will happen to many men right now. Pay attention. There are men who are just going old. There's nothing happening in their lives. It's not your fault. There are keys that have been withheld from you. But that thief must be exposed. Lift your hands. I want to pray. Ancestry. That's the first thing we are dealing with the brothers. Brothers, lift your hands. I want to pray. Many of you will be surprised to see what happens. Every spirit of ancestry. Every spirit of inheritance. Over any brother here. Stopping his advancement at the count of three. Some of you will be very surprised. That fire will come on you. Are you ready now? One, two, three. Take it. Take it. Take it. That fire. Help them, please. Help them. My goodness. Kaparata kata. Brothers are coming under this unction. It's time to move forward. It's time to move forward. Help them. I cast that spirit. I cast that spirit. I cast that spirit. Hallelujah. God does this all the time. And I don't know why God is doing this again. <laughs> ah. If he did it before, he can do it again. Listen, I see something strange happening. Strange happening. Strange happening in the spirit. And I'm seeing the spirit of the Lord moving. And God is saying he's visiting Eastern Ants. Eastern and evil people. That's what I'm seeing. There are altars that need to be broken. Please pay attention. I'm about to pray right now. Wherever they are, always he will do it. You are from the east. Get set. Be sensitive. Come on. You shouldn't be doing that. Eastern and Lord, wherever they are, it will come like fire on you. You will be surprised. To see what will happen to you now. The spirit of God goes to the east. The spirit of God goes to the east. And is bringing deliverance. Deliverance. Strange deliverance. Evil people. Strange deliverance. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Is visiting your soil. Visiting your foundation. Visiting your soil. If it did it before. He can do it again. Same God back then. Same God right now. If he did it before, Abia, 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 Abia said, Shaka Tabarata, Abia, Abia, the Spirit of God is moving. Across Apia, miracles breaking foundations. If he did it before, he can do it again. Same God back then. Hallelujah. Many of you wonder why God does these things. There are signs and wonders. He steps into, you will see the testimonies that will come from this thing. Strange visitations. Lift your
Lift your hands, everybody. Joshua Selman. God, please. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. I'm walking in the spirit and I see a map. And the Lord is asking me to jump upon it. And I see Kaduna. Southern Kaduna. That's what I see. Right now, Lord, at your word, move. Southern Kaduna. Visiting men and women. That's what the spirit of God is saying. I speak it. I place the word of God upon it. Lord, go to that region. Right now, Southern Kaduna. Southern Kaduna. From Saminaka to Zonkua. Everywhere. Move. Let the power of God touch people. Liberty for territories. Liberty for territories. No matter where you are, I'm telling you. Southern Kaduna, fire is falling. Fire is falling upon your soil. Upon your soil. Southern Kaduna. Southern Kaduna, that's what I see. Southern Kaduna. Connected to Southern Kaduna, there is a miracle happening. Altars in Southern Kaduna, I come against you by this apostolic and prophetic mantle. Leave God's people now. of the spirit I found it working in my life is powerful God just calls a territory and everyone is like a digital spiritual system it's not something you just do by guesswork it's the spirit of God the spirit of God the spirit of God God is still touching Kaduna people I'm still hearing it in my spirit God is still touching Kaduna people there's no escape any family tied to any altar comes under fire. Any Kaduna family married to Kaduna living in Kaduna state. hallelujah please lift your hands while still pray I want to pray for students now something miraculous will happen here now I want to pray for students because I see conspiracy to short circuit people's performances I'm going to pray but there is a God in heaven with an all-seeing eye. And there is an unction he can release. I'm going to pray. Listen, let me tell you. You will be surprised to hear the testimonies that will come. The way God is working this night is very supernatural. If the power of God comes upon you, I want you to know that an angel is doing something over your result. Just hear what I'm saying. Hear what I'm saying. I'm speaking by the Spirit. Father, there are people whose results need to be worked upon divinely. And where are they? I see almost 45 people. Right now at the count of three. One. Results. Two. Three. Let the angels begin to move. As they move, it will affect you. As the power of God touches you, your result is being worked upon. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Inside and outside. Results, results. Carry of us. Receiving the mercy of God. Receiving the mercy of God. God upgrading CGPS. Upgrading CGPS. Take it. 
take it, take it, take it, take it. CGPS, by the power of the Holy Ghost, supernaturally, by the creative power of prophecy, receive it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Everything that has refused to let you smile, hear me? That joy and laughter will not come out of your mouth. I stand tonight in the name of Jesus. I bring that thing under fire. I bring it under fire. I bring it under fire. Shake it tatata. I bring it under fire. Yeah. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Just lift your hands and be silent if you can. A miracle is happening. A miracle is happening. This is what I'm seeing. I'm seeing letters in the spirit. And these are employment letters. Hold on. Just keep your hand. Just do what I'm asking you to do. You will be surprised. Many of you for you and for your loved ones. The Lord is just asking. Just lift your hand. Father, at least 17 people. Inside, outside, there are up to five people online. Supernatural jobs. May the angels of breakthrough take this word to the people right now. Right now, right now. Right now, receive it. Receive those letters in the spirit. Receive it in the spirit. Receive it in the spirit. Receive it in the spirit. For you, for your loved ones. I don't care what they read. I don't care what they have. We give them jobs. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I see at least four people. Three of them are ladies in the congregation. Your mothers are due for promotion. But they've done everything they know to do. As I'm speaking right now. An anointing will come upon you. To signify what he's doing to them. Lord go ahead. Locate them. Promotion. I force it. I force it now. I force that promotion. Take it. Carry it for your mothers. Whoever is sitting on their promotion. Whoever is sitting on their promotion. The judgment of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to pray for the sick, but um, there are two women I want to pray for here. You are trusting God for the fruit of the womb. Now, I know there are many people. Listen, there are two women, particularly one of them, the anointing of please, no standing for wife, no standing for anybody. If you are not the person, um, sit down. If you are not married, don't come here. Praise God. Please. The two women by themselves. I'm going to pray. That lady, oh, let me let me let me pray for her. That devil, let her go. Don't disturb us. Don't waste our time. Out! Out now. Out in the name of Jesus. I curse you by the God of heaven. In the name of Jesus. You are living. Release her family. Release her destiny right now. The noise maker, out you go and don't waste our time in Jesus' name. I set her free in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, please listen. We are going to pray for those two women. I don't know if there are here, the two of them here. There's one of them. Um, I'm seeing one of them. The anointing of the spirit is going to come upon her. I don't know who that person is. But there's one. Please, do we have such people? We have to be fast. If I mention your case once, we give you one minute. 
there's no response we have to move so that God can help us please except if they are outside there then that's all right the married women that need the fruit of the womb we have to pray for them right now praise the Lord how many of us are trusting God for healing miracles in our bodies let me see your hands I know many of our mothers are in this category no matter what the case is who is stand up come on the power of God will come upon that person please make sure they are married though. please stand up stand up madam it's okay uh, madam madam it's okay please madam look at me look at me look at me how many years have you been married 20 years 20 years no child. Look at me. Madam, look at me. Look at me. It's okay. 20 years of marriage. If, if that woman gave birth to a child by now, that's the other person, right? Wariness. Why am I seeing her? I'm seeing chains around her stomach. You must remove it now. Remove it now. You are a devil of darkness. You hear my voice. Take off that chains now. In the name of Jesus Christ. There's no such thing as barrenness. It's nonsense. When a spirit sits on your stomach, there's no way a child will come. If you like, do whatever. You go to India and come back. You only waste money. But there is a God. Madam, please look at me. I want to pray for you. Are you here with your husband? You came. And you decided to. Where is your husband? Okay. okay, look at me, madam. Do you believe God can give you a child? I believe that's why I came. It's okay, it's okay, madam. Look at me. Look at me, madam. Place your hand on your stomach. I want to pray. How many of us believe this woman will come and stand and testify? If you are doubting this, you've not been in Koinonia. Madam, look at me. I want you to shout as loud as you can. I receive. Just shout it. I receive. This God, ba. Let me tell you, that is that is not working in your life does not mean it's not available. I've told you this thing. You have to believe there are dimensions in God. This woman you see will come and stand here with her child. Why is she here, madam? Why are you here? You are married for how many years? Give her the mic. How many years? Ten years. The anointing is on you. Lay your hands on your stomach. Look at me, madam. Shout, I receive, if you believe. I receive. <laughs> There's something leaving your body now. Let it go. You are a devil. Let her go right now. Something is coming out of your stomach. That's what I'm seeing. That's what has stopped your barrenness. Go and have your child. In the name of Jesus. Go and have your child. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please let me pray. Madam, make sure you people return with your testimonies. Want to pray. Is your husband here? Husband, please come, sir. I want to pray for you. Marriage is between two people, not three people. I look in the spirit and I'm seeing three people. Somebody is a stranger in this equation. Please come, sir. I'm seeing a third person in the spirit refusing to let this marriage work. 
I'm seeing a third person in the realm of the spirit refusing to let this marriage work. The devil is a liar. We are going to pray. Please hold your hands together. Just in one of your hands. Yes, I want to pray. Please put your hand on your Watch what happens to you. There is a name. Oh. There is a name. There is a name. Lift them. Lift them. Lift them. Lift them. Lift them. There is a name. Let her go. Strangers, Kabataya. What God has joined together, I'm prophesying. That's why I said, hold your hands. Anybody whose hand is not held physically should not be in this equation. Therefore, I prophesy. Any stranger, release what you are putting in a stomach now. I'm seeing a snake. That's what I see in the spirit. I'm looking and I'm seeing a serpent. In the name of Jesus, release her now. Release her now. Kaparatakaya. Marriage was done legally. Therefore, you are an illegal occupant. Release her now. Let there be miracle children. Miracle children. I'm seeing a lady in the crowd. You are standing in for your sister who has been married for five years. Who is that? I want to pray for that person. Five years. Your sister has been married five years. No child. No child. You are the one? Where is she? What's her name? Deborah. Where is she? She's in How many years? Five years. No child. No child. My brother, six years. And you, the devil, wants to give you four years. I will cancel it. Destiny changer. You are the destiny changer. Will you come and change my destiny? My destiny today. Come and change my destiny. My destiny today. Destiny changer. Don't just come out at will. What's, hold on, hold on. Coordinate yourself. Who is this? Hold on, hold on. Leave them, leave them. It's okay. Victor, leave her. It's okay. Calm down. How many years? Nine years. Huh? Nine years. Where is she? She's in other embouching. Kiki Amata. Is that the same we embue? Amen. Why are you here, my dear? She has been having miscarriages. For how many years? Yes. Three years. Mm. Her husband wants a boy, she wants a girl. Who will win? Did you hear what I said? I said her husband wants a boy, she wants a girl. Who will win? The man is the head of the family. See, this thing is being done by an anointing. It's not, it's not, it's not joke. It's an anointing. Look at me. Listen, every lady, place your hand on your womb. I want to pray for you. Just, just place your hand and leave it there. Hold on, not, not for the brothers. Brothers, you don't have a just calm down. I know I'm praying for the sisters. That's why I'm praying. Because you see, listen, just follow what I'm doing. You will be surprised to see what will happen. The Bible, the Bible does not allow you to test whether you are pregnant first before you marry. Is that true? So there is no way you know. You just marry and then find out it's a disaster. For a man, a family to pay the price, pay dowry, and get married, and then there's that nonsense. So lay your hands. I want to pray for you. Let's attack it in advance. If you care for the prayer, lay your hands. For some of you, God is saving you years of misery. I'm seeing a number 21, and this is at least 21 people and families involved. Father, visit them now. Visit them now. Visit them now. I'm praying a miracle is happening to your womb. Visit them now. Visit them now. Visit them now. Right now, everything that wants to plant barrenness in your stomach, for every lady here and those watching online, 
I command it to leave you right now in the name of Jesus. I command it to leave you right now in the name of Jesus. My dear, look at me. Hold that baby. You, Ejimi, please give her that child. Just hold her so she doesn't fall. Just hold that baby. You are holding this child as a prophetic symbolism for your sister, for you when you get married, and for every other person, and for two other people who are in the congregation. This prophecy is connecting them. Where are they, oh God? Where are they, oh God? The anointing of the Spirit will locate them now. Right now, two of them in the congregation for this miracle, for this miracle, for this miracle. Daddy, sir, please let me talk to you. Just give a few minutes. You and the madam close to you. Mommy, please come. You are an usher, but you are praying. Come. Let God answer your prayers. This lady is talking to the Lord. What was the issue? It's my sister. You are asking the Lord to do what? Yes, sir. She has put to bed in time. But none of them is alive. Because I'm seeing a spirit. As soon as she's giving birth, this is like an antelope. It eats the children. As in, it's the child. Sometimes most of the children will grow nine months. You give birth. Then they will last for only a few minutes and they will die. Hold my hands. Where is she? Don't, don't cry. Don't cry. Where is she? What's her name? Laddie. Laddie. Laddie will speak to you. Lay your hand on your stomach. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we declare that this, this, this frustration is over. In the name of Jesus Christ. That is, I want to pray for you. Mama, good evening, ma. Please stand up. Who is the stubborn child that you want God to touch? Lift his picture up. Lift up. Lift up. This is your number one prayer. The one you want to marry. Where is the person? The one you want a job for that graduated. Job, job, the one that graduated. The graduates. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Henry. Henry. Mama, yes, sir. this is to tell you that God knows your situation. I hear what I'm saying. Yes, sir. This boy needs to be prayed for. So yes. that this boy, so that they will not go and lock him in police station. Yeah? This, I don't know who the boy is, but... Let it stop on, sir. That's what I'm saying, madam. It's okay. You are here for God to visit you. Amen. Amen. Who is Nonso? Nonso. Nonso. I'm hearing the name Nonso. We are going to pray. Nonso. Mama. We are going to pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Eh? Very soon. Solomon, you want to marry? He's want... planning for his wedding, sir. Okay, it's all right. We'll, we'll pray for him. In the name of Jesus Christ, Mama, I pray for you. You came here expecting the power of God to touch you. Exactly. Huh? Yes, sir. Mama, do you want the pain in your body to stop? Yes, sir. You wake yes, up in the Lord. morning and there's severe pain yes, in your Lord. back. Sir, you know about this thing. I know, sir. True. And the Lord is going to do a great miracle for Mama. Amen. Because Mama, I'm seeing you. You can't wash for long. Yes, sir. You bend down to wash, and your back is pain. Exactly. Thank you, Father. In the I name of that. Jesus Christ, the Lord who has seen you is going to do a miracle Amen. for you. I command by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Help, Mama, Thank you, in Father. Jesus' name. Thank you. Please, don't. who is this? Eh? No, so, my friend, are you not so? Help the boy, his trousers removing. Who is that? Who brought him out? Maybe we should help him now. <laughs> Sir, I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you. 
What do you do, sir? The proprietor of a school. I'm a pastor. I'm a civil engineer by training. You own a school? I do, sir. Primary school? Nursery and primary. Nursery and primary? Yes, sir. You've been afraid to start the secondary school? Seriously, sir. Is that true? I've been afraid. Because what is happening in the primary, up and down, up and down, people are taking their children out of your school. And they are owing money. And they are owing money. And you are trusting God for a miracle. Because you too, you need a lot of money now. As you are standing here like this, you need money. Very correct, sir. And this money is much. Don't collect loan. Don't collect loan. Loan is a way to die. Time is the Don't collect loan. Sir, I want to pray for you. One of the things you are going to start seeing as you minister the word is breakthrough. You will start seeing strange breakthroughs. Amen. In the lives of people. Amen. And then we want to pray for your school, sir. Things are going down. What you need is not money. What you need is very qualified teachers who are really willing to teach. Because the people there, they will come today, few months, they want to leave. And when they, you know, they want, I will have to pray for you. The devil is a liar. Please lift your hands, sir. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Let the anointing for speed come upon you, sir. Supernatural speed. In the name of Jesus Christ. Grace and speed for you. Mama, God bless you. Please, who is this? Please, if we have not called your case, just be patient. We are going to pray for the sick now. Why is Mama here? Mommy, please come. Huh? Your son's name is Nonso. What's your name? Nonso. From where? Madam from State. You are a student here? No. Dark. Who is Shidi? I'm hearing the name Shidi. 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 Let me pray for the person now. Mama, I'm going to pray for you. Uh, what you need, this one is not, I'm not even getting any word for your son or so. What God is saying, I should prophesy to you, is that he's bringing restoration to your life. God is saying, I should tell you, you see that song that I sang at the beginning of the meeting? Yes, we are I'm speaking how, sir, it's finished. That's what God is saying, I should tell you, that he's going to bring restoration to your life, supernatural restoration right now, by the power of the Holy Spirit. Hold my hands. I'm not getting any prophetic word for you, but in the name of Jesus, may God step in and do a miracle for you. Come, come and get something. You need to pray. Huh? You need academic breakthrough. Receive that grace in Jesus' name. Please, why are these people here? Huh? John. You are serving in Musa. Have you started serving? Yes. In the place where? Father, give him favor. As you go, let there be favor in Jesus' name. Amen. You are what? John. John. Yes. From where? Zaria. I said, Sam, Father John. But since you have come out, let me pray for you. Yeah? Lay your hands on your chest. You love God? Hi. John. John, look at me. God can give you a new beginning. You hear what I'm saying? It's when I make altar call, John, run and join them. Huh? I'm going to pray for you, but that statement you made is not true. Oh God, help John in the name of Jesus Christ. Because you see, you have to be serious with God. Oh God, help John in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray. She's older than she actually is. Huh? And there is a there is, there is a medical condition. This is a feminine thing that I'm seeing that is responsible for this. Um, can I change your house, sir? Yeah? Yes, sir. Okay, Turen Shima, you, you understand English? I'm seeing happy birthday on top of you and I'm seeing 50 years. How old are you? Shakaran Kina. I born me on... 
66. 1966. How old is that? This woman is 50, but she's looking like 70. The devil is a liar. Huh? I'm seeing something. It's not something I can say in the open. But you need to be healed. Madam, this thing started happening to you since when you were about 17 years. Abune Afara, Miki. Look at Skinko. Yes. About 17 years, this thing started. This is a serious woman issue. This is women talk. Father, we cancel this nonsense. In the name of Jesus Christ, it must live in Jesus' name. Beginning from today, experience the goodness of God in Jesus' name. May the Lord favor you too in Jesus' name. We want to pray for the sick now. Please, this is our miracle service. Bear with us. We have to deal with these things. You see that there are so many, there are so many situations. We are praying. Everyone, you can be seated if you can or stand. We are soon going to be done. But I want us to pray. Are we together? Say after me, inside and outside, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Please say it like you're serious. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I declare, I declare that every closed gate standing before my destiny under this corporate anointing swing open now lift your voice and begin to pray please we are not just whiling away time pray participate in the prayer some of us that's what is that's what is affecting our lives every gate every gate every gate every gate every gate Finances, over every area of my life, be open now. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Prayer point number two I will see prophesied upon your life. Say in the name of Jesus, I call forth by the power of prayer every helper who will give me access to resources, to opportunities, and to new levels. I call them into my destiny. Lift your voice and pray. This is a powerful prayer. It's a very powerful prayer. Hallelujah. 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 I'd like you to prophesy and say in the name of Jesus. Shout it in the name of Jesus. As I enter these ember months, I declare that the mystery of divine preservation is upon my life. No death, no accident, no bad news. Lift your voice and cancel bad news. Make sure you are praying. Some of you are just looking. Pray. It's a very serious prayer point. No bad news. Shababakataratakosotopai. I speak upon my life. The mystery of divine exemption.
supernatural preservation. Out. Shabaka para toko soto pregnant. No arrow of witchcraft is permitted to fly over my life. Outside, outside, don't be tired. You're working out your salvation with fear and trembling. Before we pray on the request, I'd like you to pray and say, In the name of Jesus, how about now? Let's be serious. In the name of Jesus, name of Jesus. September, September, October, October November, November, December. Hear my voice. I speak to you. Deliver to my life. Only blessings. No pain. No sorrow. No regrets. Go ahead and prophesy. Release power to your future. Release power to September. You shut your mouth. You shut your destiny. Release power to September. Release power to October. Release power to November. December. No plane crash. No bus crash. No armed robbery. No terrorism. Hallelujah. Say in the name of Jesus I declare a covering over me and my family members wherever they are the seal of the blood exempts them from tragedy. Listen I shared some months ago hold on. I shared some months ago a vision that the Lord showed me. I'm not one person who will stand and say, I saw this. Sometimes I see these things. I just pray. But it was upon my spirit and I said it. Remember, I spoke about the month of September. Everything you see us do here is prophetic. As you speak, it looks like you are joking. But you are releasing power to your future. He said, declares thou that he might be justified. Hast thou commanded thy morning? You don't sit down and it delivers everything to you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Say in the name of Jesus. The seal of the blood 
is upon my life and my family members. Therefore, every spirit of death and loss and disaster must pass over my life and my family. Lift your voice and pray. No, not upon my life. Not upon my loved ones. They are sealed by the mystery of the blood. No accident. No accident. No death. No obituary. No plane crash. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Stretch your hands towards this prayer request and begin to turn your request to testimonies. Go ahead. All those online, follow us. We are praying. You submitted your requests and we are praying. Every request. Oh God, you have produced testimonies. Shaba katata. To the God that answers prayers. To the God that answers prayers. To the God that answers prayers. Let there be miracles, testimonies, breakthroughs. Turn around impossible situations, oh God. Let the barren come back to children. Let the poor return rich. Let the captive be set free. Let sinners come to the saving knowledge of Jesus. Let your bread be delivered. Let the sick be healed. Let jobless people return to jobs. Building projects completed. Spiritual lives be fired. Pray, pray. I'm going to prophesy upon this request and I want us to agree with a resounding amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we declare, I use this as a point of contact. Lord, there are so many requests here representing the challenges in people's lives. Some for jobs, some for marriages, some for children. Some for breakthroughs, some for study um, scholarships, others for help, others for reconciliation, others for souls, others for financial prosperity and breakthrough, others for restoration, some for deliverance, others for healing. Lord, I pray in the name that is above all names, we have a covenant of answered prayers with you. Therefore, Lord, arise as a mighty man. And turn every prayer request to a testimony in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray for all those who have sent their requests on Facebook, on Twitter, on any other platform. Lord, in the name of Jesus, give them strange visitations. Strange visitations from tonight. Strange visitations. And Lord, for every request that made it to this altar, I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I pray, answer everyone in the name of Jesus. Turn every request to a testimony in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our time is gone. I really apologize. Let me prophesy over our lives. Do you know why prophecy is very powerful? Most of the testimonies that you hear, listen, most of the testimonies that you hear are as a result of these prophetic words. Are we together? There are needs that God may not reveal and time may not permit to be able to extensively deal with. However, prophecy is powerful. It says in Numbers chapter 6 how that the priest will bless them and speak upon 
their life. There is something about a prophetic word coming upon your life. Those who know this, that is their edge in the spirit, have received it and it has produced dramatic results in their lives. Those who are careless about it like they are about many other things, never really get to receive anything. Let me tell you, even if it's an impartation, even if it's a dimension of breakthrough, for as long as you stepped your feet here, and for all the thousands following us online, connect, connect. Distance is no barrier in the spirit. It says you have turned my mourning into dancing. And you have turned my sorrow into joy. I prophesy to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Joy like you have never experienced from January till now. Experience it in the name of Jesus. Joy like you have never experienced. Experience it in the name of Jesus. Hear me. I speak to your hands. Whoever is not doing anything here. Because God said be fruitful. I don't care whether it's a job, a business. I don't care whether you're a student, a graduate, a retiree. Whoever is having an idle hand. Between now and September miracle service. I put something in your hand. I put something in your hand. I put something in your hand. In the name of Jesus. Not something that will mock you. Something that will bring results. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. I put pressure on your destiny helpers. I put pressure on them. May they respond to you. I put pressure on their spirits. May they arise and help you. May they arise and help you. Hallelujah. Any situation in your life that is a recurrent decimal, it comes as though the breakthrough is coming, then the situation repeats itself. I prophesy no more. No more. No more. No more. In the name of Jesus, no more. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Listen. Someone is speaking here like Mary and saying, how shall these things be? Lord, I, is it true that you will turn my life? I stand in the name of Jesus and I pray. A turn around that will surprise you. Receive it in the name of Jesus. A dramatic turn around. A dramatic turn around. Hallelujah. 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 In the last one month of my life, God has brought breakthroughs and things to my life that I have always believed God. But there is something God can do in your life that will make you fear Him. Not just believe Him. I prophesy to someone here. In the name that is above all names. That flight in the spirit that God can take a man and bring acceleration and not just surprise you but even make you fear. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive it in the name of Jesus. I pray for everyone in business here and it's no diving. Things are not happening. You turn everywhere. You've done everything you know to do. You need the prophetic. I add that prophetic dimension to your business. I add that prophetic dimension to your business. Every dream that is still on paper. No finances. No grace to bring it out of paper. You have been writing things for donkey years. But the grace to put it at work. I declare between now and next, next month miracle service. Bring evidence. Bring evidence. Bring evidence. Bring results. Bring results in the name of Jesus. Anyone called jobless in this place. That you have done everything to do. Including giving money to people. And they have not brought jobs to you. I don't know how God will do it. But this mountain mover that can shake 
every mountain. I pray, may he give you not just a job, a miracle job. Miracle job. Hallelujah. Every family here that is stuck in one place, you try to rise, something brings you down. You try to rise, something brings you down. Now I prophesy to you the grace for rising. Receive it in the name of Jesus. The grace for rising. Receive it in the name of Jesus. The grace for rising. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Every embargo of bad luck upon your life, it works for others until it gets to your point and people change their mind. I declare in the name of Jesus, in a way you have never seen favor and help, may you experience that throughout the month of September. Hallelujah. A dimension of anointing, a dimension of wisdom that you have never seen, receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive wisdom in the name of Jesus. Receive wisdom in the name of Jesus. And I pray for you. Everything that needs to be broken in your life. Habits and encumbrances that tie you down. I command that today is their barrier. Today is their barrier. Today is their barrier. Hallelujah. I want to prophesy for someone who has never stood here to testify. In the name of Jesus. Whatever has stopped you from climbing this altar to testify, I curse that spirit right now. 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 Hallelujah. Stretch your hands towards me. I want to speak to you. Everything that makes money run away from your hands. Money has a spirit. You have obeyed kingdom laws, but this thing is not just coming. You would try and labor and labor and nothing will come. These hands that are stretched towards me, as I stretch my hands back to you, by the mystery of divine supply, may you hold something you have never held in your life before. May you hold something you have never held in your life before. May you hold an amount you have never held in your life before. Hallelujah. Two more prayers and we are done. I pray for your spiritual life. Everything that is alive grows. If you are not growing spiritually, something is wrong. And the measure, there are two indices to measure your spiritual growth. Number one, your degree of conformity to the image of the Christ. Number two, your comprehension of the mysteries of the kingdom alongside their operation. How to make them produce consistently. I pray for you. This month as we round up this month into the next month keys that your hands have never held spiritually hold them right now in jesus name keys mysteries that you have not known or mysteries you have had and have not been able to handle may god give it to you in the name of jesus hallelujah finally this is the prayer that i pray for people with all my heart he said you shall anoint, listen, you shall anoint Aaron and his sons, right? And then he say, you shall take some of your honor and put upon him. How do you take honor and put upon him? Honor, the spiritual mystery that turns a man to a celebrity, not by working it. Honor is when men have the capacity to discern and reward what you represent. Hallelujah. I was coming from Abuja today and I stopped in Kaduna at a particular computer outfit just to buy, to quickly buy a laptop and proceed. And as soon as I stepped there, I entered, I saw all of them looking at me. They started jumping as if it was a crusade. Apostle Joshua Selman, I was so embarrassed. They ran, went and called their father, the owner of the place, uh, they call it Micro Manor in, in, in Kaduna. You know, and they were jumping and they looked, they said, ah, 
we, you have been blessed by your teachings, you know. God has lifted us. You can imagine the things that have happened. And they say, which laptop are you buying and all of that? And I looked at them. I had to just run away and go out. Because I didn't want a situation where they are doing business. They carry something that is so costly and give. Let me tell you, honor is more than money. Oh. Don't be deceived. Money is very finite. Honor is when men rise up to solve your problems for you. They rise up and make it their business to see you succeed. May somebody here receive that mantle. May somebody here receive that mantle. May a pastor here receive that mantle. May a businessman receive that mantle. Strange honor. Strange honor. Strange honor. Strange honor. Strange honor. Strange honor. Hallelujah. When you are minding your business and some people are talking and say, how do we bless this lady? As if they owe you. They get up and plan governmental figures discussing how to lift you. And people say, what is the big deal? There is a big deal. It's a mantle. Please, I want to pray it finally. I know, I know that our time is gone. But I want you to receive this thing. There are people here carrying it bodily. When you carry it, it speaks. See, let me tell you, the true proof of sonship is a replication of grace. A replication of grace. A replication that you are carrying something you know, the devil knows and heaven knows that this is like an address. It will cause good things to look for you. I want to pray for you. Honor makes your life easy. Otherwise, you will suffer for anything. Everything. You are in trouble. You pay for it alone. There is a mystery of honor. And Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. I pray for you, my God. In the name of Jesus, I pray for your people in this great house. You have placed your mantle of honor upon this house and by grace upon my life. I'm praying right now. Everyone under the sound of my voice. Ay, 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 ay. In a dimension you have never seen. Or for those of you who have seen a measure of it in a higher dimension... Receive that mantle of honor. 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 Keep standing everybody. I want to make an altar call now. Please no moving around. Let's honor what God is doing. No sitting down. Just five minutes and we're done. Thank you so much for your patience. We stretched the time quite um, but I think that it's worth it. If you pay that much price and you come back with tear some testimonies, it's a wise baguette. There are still people under the anointing. God is still doing things. And even after the service, God is still going to be touching people. But very quickly, I want to make a call. There are people outside all the overflows, any of them. And there are people following us online. You are saying, man of God, I heard you speak. And whilst you spoke, the Holy Spirit convicted my heart and told me it's time to make a commitment or a rededication. For some of you, this is your first time making a genuine decision for Jesus. Others, you have made that decision, but you are rededicating yourself. Wherever you are, please make your way to the front. Make sure that you do not leave this place without making that decision. God bless you. There are people coming. God bless you. God bless you. Don't be afraid. Don't be ashamed. God bless you, young and old. Clear the way for them. Please, if you are coming from outside, I want you to save time. Double up, hurry up and come. God bless you. Alana Bakasuchi Ata. Alana Bakasuchi Ata. Keep coming. Alana Bakasuchi Ata. Keep coming quickly, please. hold on thank you so much for coming men and women people who love god listen no matter what has happened in your life no matter what you have done i don't want you to stand here feeling guilty rebels don't come to god they run away from god 
so that you are here in his presence some of you are rededicating your life some of you are doing so for the first time it doesn't matter what category i want you to lift your right hand please if you are still coming join them very quickly lift your right hand and say after me very clearly you are not reciting a poem say lord jesus i love you and i believe in you that you died for me to prove your love for me and now i give my heart to you to prove my love for you i receive eternal life into my spirit i declare that i'm above sin i'm above satan i'm above the flesh in the name of jesus from today i declare that i have the life of god i'm a child of god my name is in the lamb's book of life and i am victorious in the name of jesus keep your hands lifted please father thank you for these ones you have drawn them by your wisdom let today be the beginning of of great days in their lives in the name of jesus christ i pray that everything they have laid at your altar will remain there and never cling to their lives again open them up to a new dimension of life in the name of jesus christ holy spirit i ask that you come into the lives of every one of these precious people in the name of jesus use them for your glory give them tearful testimonies in the name of jesus i pray amen thank you so much for making this decision now i'd like you to follow this gentleman and the lady waving their hands they will have your details in a minute and then you'll be back to your seat god bless you honor them koinonia Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And then if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. For watching. In the name of Jesus, drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season, it is still dry season spiritually, financially, and otherwise. I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain.